Пошли. Все в месте. Какие ваши доказательства? Кокаином. live on my end um hi to all of my viewers at least hi to lance's viewers and david's and uh, everyone else's viewers yes um, hello to everyone else is viewers i'm just making sure that everything is uh working yeah i think i mean i think i'm live but i don't know i'm just guessing and hoping it works <laughs> oh damn like four of us are live right now <laughs> yeah Sweet. maybe we're good like a boomer i'm just like googling my twitch stream and I'm checking to oh, make sure I that it's see working. My chat. Yay! It's that's what I'm doing too. I'm at least I... <laughs> checking the YouTube. I can't page. see nobody's chats. I wish I could see somebody's chat. <laughs> okay. <laughs> you could you open, open someone's, someone's video and then just like mute mute the audio. And I'm about to. Chat. I literally. I, that was a great mind. Think of like mm -hmm. I was going to Lance's right now. Let me go do that. Let me go to Lance's. They nice to me there. I like that. <laughs> <laughs> nice. You gotta, you gotta save space. In the search. They are so nice. Like y'all are. Yeah. Just, goodest little bunch of people <laughs> they are nice i'm not gonna lie guys i'm i'm like watching the game awards right beside you all <laughs> will you <laughs> let me know i want to see what new games are going to be announced today one, so uh, uh one like best uh, actor right it was a very hard yeah talk, christopher uh, judge for uh kratos got a word that oh, game, he won fucking amazing game good like, he won yes. yeah his, hell yeah his speech was like 20 minutes long oh i, <laughs> was it really? oh, I see the nice comments oh i like this oh there you go <laughs> <laughs> I'm, I'm a Leo, you know. I love. I love. Listen, I am a sucker for flattery. Oh, I, I'm a. I'm a flattery loving bitch. Like, ooh, does anyone not like flattery though? I love flattery too. Some people be frustrated. People like to pretend like they're so above it. I'm like, stop it. Okay, this is a world we're on. I do pretend I'm above it, but I like it. <laughs> Same. Same. Say nice stuff to me. I'll be. Oh, I'll be the nicest bitch you've ever met. <laughs> love that. <laughs> Oh, so I think we should maybe just, um, I guess since we're going to try this out, chat this out to all the chats, um, at least in my chat, I'm going to post this a little Google form link. We're going to try this oh, time yeah. to allow it. questions so that we can kind of look at questions that you guys might have because sometimes we might miss things in the chat. Um, so I'm going to post the link in my chat. Everyone's who's live, I assume you guys are going to post in your chats as well. Mm -hmm. The right link, I gave another link, don't post the other one. Um, and then you guys can ask questions and then we'll try and talk about it as well too. So we can see what you guys want us to talk about as well. Yeah, I love that. I love being able to like have the audience influence what we discuss because Absolutely. it's easy. Like I'm the type of person where I, I go on tangents really easily. So if there's no like borders up or any type of like, I don't know, something to steer me in the right direction, I can go, I can land anywhere. So I like that. And there you go. I will send this to my chat. Yeah, yeah let me do this. I still am a monologue loving bitch. <laughs> Absolutely. There's nothing wrong with that, though. Oh no, I know. Oh no, I live for a good monologue. I love it. <laughs> like, that's my everything. Let me get a rant going. Okay. I think I posted that in all my chats. I'm sorry, I'm so slow with this. Whatever. No, thank I'll... you for making this. I appreciate that. I'll try and update it for every single week. So there's going to be a new form for every week. So this one's for episode two. Hey, oh, Matt. <laughs> Oh, there's hello. Uh, I forgot that it starts at eight thirty and not nine. Don't worry. <laughs> mm, how convenient. Actually okay. I'm also I'm also very uh, very distracted by uh, the Twitter files part two that are currently being. Dropped. I, I saw you on Twitter. Wait, it just dropped just now. Yeah. yeah you ready oh, for wow. the big reveal? Okay. What's this? Twitter one? 
Twitter shadow bans. Did you know <gasps> that? <laughs> what? <laughs> no. <laughs> and ready for this? One of the no. big points that 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 uh, Barry Weiss is making is that libs of TikTok was doxxed in a photo of her house. In one tweet was posted, doxxed in a photo of her tweet was posted in November twenty on November twenty first two thousand twenty two, and Twitter did nothing. The tweet is still up. Uh, Elon Musk owns the company while this is what's going on. He's the one responsible. <laughs> <laughs> and and she's trying to she's trying to place it out of place on the timeline to make it seem like like she she was talking about things that happened before Elon Musk. Then she dropped the libs of TikTok example. And then all of a sudden right after she drops that example, she's back in 2021 before Musk owned the platform. She's trying to of like course like mm. needle it in there so the idiots who are reading this and there are many idiots going crazy over this <laughs> don't don't realize its place on the timeline where's the shame like these people are like the amount of garbage and shit they have put out like Barry White started her career uh trying to get Palestinian uh professors fired right it wasn't that like what her like she was in college complaining about about uh Palestinian rights only to then go on and talk about cancel culture her entire life like it's it, they're they're all such frauds that it amazes me that they continue to have the status and the access to an audience that they do when over and over again they have shown themselves to be full of shit but we have to be here explaining it every single time it's ridiculous mm -hmm. people have no standards so so I guess is that going to be the first topic? Do we have an official intro? Do we say anything like a welcome to the leftist mafia? Well, how much welcome. how much did I miss? What were, what were you guys talking about before I interrupted? Nothing. We, we <laughs> haven't done anything yet. Yeah, but that was that was pretty much the first topic that's been explored. I think. Yeah, that that's it. We're literally jumping in. Um, and we we're just going over with the chat that we now have this little Google form so that the chat can ask us questions and we can see kind of what they want us to talk about. Which I'm peeking through and I see what they want us to talk about. Good stuff tonight, by the way. Mm. So, um, if you want, I mean, welcome everyone to the leftist mafia. We're all here. And, uh, and I think that's it. Let's do this. Yeah. And I just want to say thank you all so much. I saw nothing but positivity, um, on yeah. all of our channels because I'm, I, for some reason I've become that person. We'll all look at the comments again. And there was so much positivity. You all said such wonderful and encouraging things. Um, and I'm glad that you all are having as much fun watching as we are here. Because I feel like this is just kind of a hangout session, an event session, and they're very therapeutic. And yeah, it seems like it's the same for everyone else watching. So I'm very thankful. Yeah, it's fun. Absolutely. Uh, yeah. So where, so where should we begin? Should we talk about Twitter a little bit? Or do we want to start jumping into to like a variety of topics? What, what's everyone feeling tonight? I, I'll be honest, if if we're going to crack the egg with what Matt's talking about, it's probably yeah. easiest to just rip that Band-Aid off and, and get it out of the way. And then, and then we don't ever have to say the words Matt Taibbi again. Probably never. Excuse uh, you, it's maybe. Barry White today. <laughs> no, I know, I know. But we got we to gotta do some backtracking, right? We got we to gotta tell a story. There, there's, there's a whole legend to be told here. I already did a whole hour and a half on Matt Taibbi's. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, sorry, well, sorry. Are, say, can, oh, sorry. They're moving from Taibi to Barry Weiss is doing this now. Like, did is yeah. Taibi off the case, or like, what's what's going on here? No, no, no. So Elon <laughs> tapped specific people, right? And I think Elon was trying to find that sweet spot be between someone who has basically like still a shred of credibility, as in like this person just can't be discounted, even though they're an opinion journalist. But we just can't throw this right out. That crossed with. Are they like going to be soft enough that when I straight up say you have to do whatever I say, they will? Because Matt Taibbi had to agree to conditions before he was allowed to release the Twitter files on Twitter, which would benefit one person, which is Elon Musk, right? I think the whole thing is just dangling keys. That's how I see it. Mm -hmm. It's it's one person, Elon Musk, who has been fucking flailing public, uh, sorry, publicly on the $44 billion divorce app that he has bought. It's a nightmare of his own design. And he's holding up this pair of keys to be like, look, it's not as bad as you think. Check this out. Look, I, I got secrets. I'm revealing them. And then that's where Matt Taibbi comes in. <laughs> Believe it or not, I missed this Twitter files thing. Like, mm -hmm. <laughs> the, more, the more I listen, the more I'm like, hmm. <laughs> I have missed this. Does somebody want to give like a Matt? Do you want to give like sure. a basic? 
Sure, sure, sure. Let's do this. Okay, so uh, Elon Musk claims he has, now that he owns Twitter, there's all this interesting stuff that he's uncovering in, because, you know, he has access to everyone's private emails in Twitter, like all of the former employees and all, everyone. He has their Slack messages, everything. Uh, which, you know, if you work for Twitter, what a great thing to know that they're going to all be public. I wonder if there's some sort of law against, uh, right. you know, privacy like, and stuff like that. Why would you be telling us something that wouldn't that alarm us as the public that you out here just going through everybody's fucking business? Like, oh, also on top, right. Also on top of that, none of the individuals who are f either former or current Twitter employees who are going to be uncovered in these None of them are individually, I'm not a lawyer, you are, so you could probably let me know if I'm right here, but um, none of the current or former employees would be legally held responsible for what they did for their work, for their employer. Yeah. So if there's any sort of legal ramification here, it would be against someone to sue Twitter and who would they sue? Elon Musk, because he's the current owner of Twitter. He, by all buying Twitter, he also becomes responsible for everything it previously did as well. Yeah. Yeah, no, he, yeah, he's opening himself up to lawsuits, but uh, he's, he's no stranger to that. The man is a fool. Mm. <laughs> like, <I'm laughs> so, so now Twitter files, I guess. So, so now what are the Twitter files and who's putting, give me the tea? Okay, so the first Twitter files dropped Friday night, and it came from Matt Taibbi, who has had a long downfall over the past couple of years oh, from yeah. serious journalist to releasing stuff that Elon Musk personally sent to him. Um, now, the, 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 yeah, uh, yeah, transphobia as well, defending Matt yeah. Walsh. Um, yeah, just all around piece of shit. Right. So the Twitter files part one was supposed to ostensibly show that Twitter colluded with the Democratic Party and the government to, uh, you know, uh, hurt users' First Amendment rights, which is laughable in and of itself. Elon Musk even tweeted out as Matt Taibbi was dropping these Twitter files. Um, Elon Musk even said, I've never seen a clearer violation of the First Amendment, which, again, it's not a there's no violation of the First Amendment. A private company can choose to have policies that and, and they could make those policies however they'd like. It's their platform. They could choose what sort of content they want on there or not. So the first thing is Matt Taibbi starts tweeting uh, multiple tweets in this tweet thread that's basically just like gibberish, bullshit, meant to like try to like, I, I don't know if he was trying to like build up suspense or he needed to really actually explain why this was a big deal because as you'll see, what he actually shows is not a big deal at all. But it's like not, it's like you learn in journalism 101 that the first thing you do when you have a story, a breaking story to report, the first thing you do in that very first paragraph, the nut graph is, you tell people exactly what you're breaking. You tell people straight up in as few sentences as possible, here's the news, this is what you should know. This is what we're uncovering. It takes him like, eight tweets to get to, and he only decides to get to it after eight tweets because he Isn't admits, enough. okay, everyone's complaining. Everyone's complaining it's taking me too long. So then we get to the actual stuff. And the first thing he uh, he shows us is a few screenshots from uh, the Joe Biden campaign. This was the campaign before November 2020. The election hasn't happened yet. And it shows, the uh, uh, it actually is an email from a few Twitter employees where they say the Joe Biden campaign sent them a few tweets. Uh, they include the links to the tweets and they want us to look at this for possible takedown. Twitter apparently looks at this and this, these tweets and decides to take them down. Matt Taibbi does not show us what these tweets are. He just says, look, the Joe Biden campaign asked Twitter to take stuff down and they did it. Well, people like me and other reporters who actually do <laughs> decide to do actual journalism, we looked up these tweets and obviously these tweets were taken down from Twitter, but guess what? The internet archive saved like five out of the seven of them. And if you look at what these five tweets that were archived are, they're nudes and, fo and, and, and naked photos of Hunter Biden from the stolen laptop. So Twitter took down these <coughs> tweets because they they're, they they're non-consensual nudes. Yeah, yeah it's, they like they're, they're, like the right wing is complaining. Very normal. 
that Hunter Biden's uh, hog wasn't allowed to be posted on Twitter. Like that's what it was supposed to be the about. October surprise. You should add that. Right, that's why right. they were so mad. The Trump administration, sorry, the Trump campaign at the time thought the release of all of these was going to destroy the world. And now they're screaming that the election was stolen in addition to everything else because they couldn't release this. But like it was released. It came out right. in the fucking, the new, the, what is it? The New York Post. Uh, it was like Fox 50 million times, by the way. Like it was yeah. like yeah. everyone saw like, this article. <laughs> like it's not yes. like it was hidden. But here's the thing. Here, here's the thing next, though, in this. I just, want, I just want to drop all this stuff really quick so we have it, the whole thing. Um, the next thing is Matt Taibbi then says, here's proof that Twitter colluded with the Democrats because Twitter itself is biased. Now, you would assume there'd be some sort of internal document showing Twitter is extremely biased to the Democrats. No. What Matt Taibbi offers up as proof is a screenshot of the website Open Secrets that anyone can access that shows, lo and behold, no big shock. Again, everyone knows this because you could look it up yourself publicly online. The majority of people employed by Twitter donate to Democratic candidates and campaigns over Republican candidates and campaigns. That's all he offers up as evidence. Nothing internally, nothing that Elon Musk sent him, because again, there's nothing there. And then thirdly, and the last, before we could start discussing this, is he then, uh, the, the next part of this, and what's supposed to be the biggest of the reveals, is internal discussion between Twitter employees about the removal of that New York Post link. And the internal discussion, which is supposed to show great bias and everything, never shows the Biden campaign or the Democratic Party get involved at all. They are, they, there's no proof they ever messaged Twitter at all that was shown to us about the New York Post link at all. It was just those nude photos being posted directly to Twitter. And then second of all, the discussions being that were, were shared were debates within Twitter between high level Twitter employees who were saying this is wrong, we shouldn't be doing this, and some saying we need to, you know, we need to be cautious. It's not clear what's going on. So it shows that there actually was heated discussion to try to figure out what to do. And then by the end of that same night that they block the the link from being shared, they reverse it and decide the link can be shared. There's nothing here at all that a we didn't know about or b proves something we didn't know. Wow. You know. I more than the stupidity for me, it's really just like the inconsistency in logic. Like we have to we have to pick a lane. Either we're going to pretend, either we're purporting to to equate Twitter to the government, which is what they do because their mm -hmm. inability to understand that your rights are only applied as to the government is baffling. But either they're gonna say Twitter has that same kind of impact and power, which is an argument, whatever, as the government. Or they make their argument like Twitter is not a real place. Twitter isn't reflected. It's this leftist bubble. It's this yada, 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 yada. Pick one. Pick mm -hmm. fucking one. But they're fucking inconsistent, right? That's the one. But two, this, this, like, like I say, you know, the right always has this on the upside down. <laughs> but it's like, bro, Twitter, yeah, a lot of people on Twitter is more of a, a more, a more liberal platform. Are you going to see more of that? And that's just because, statistically speaking, people that are far more educated are on Twitter by comparison to like mm -hmm. Instagram and other apps. That's just the truth. Usually, when you're more educated, you come around to not having asked and I'm asked beliefs. That's usually how that goes, right? So, mm -hmm. ooh, big, big shocker, you're, you're educated folk running Twitter. Ooh, li <laughs> liberals, big surprise. <laughs> You know, so it's just like they're never they're never even making any any argument. And it's just like also Elon Musk has to find something to fucking do like this whole like <laughs> it's it's not this deep. And like I, and I'm and I'm hear me. I'm a bitch who feels seriously about Twitter. Like I I get I get feeling strongly about Twitter affairs <laughs> like but my guy it is not this fucking serious like nobody to it like twitter gate twitter files for real we we out here doing what now we're releasing what you you digging through the company personnel's business like have not you to mention like th there's no journalism here elon musk has the files and gave them to taibi it's not like this is like mm -hmm. some some long like you know, year-long investigation. Like, he gave you the files. You're just, like, dumping them out <laughs> in accordance to what he says. Because he said, like, he, he, he says that the White House also requested tweets get taken down and doesn't go into that. Uh, has he gone into that? Like, has, has he mentioned what those are yet? Because that's the actual government re recommending that these get removed off social media. The Biden campaign is, he's a private citizen. That, that's a private yeah. campaign. That, that's not the government doing that. So also, the actual story, yeah. if there is a story, is what was the Trump administration 
telling uh, Twitter to take down. But they don't go like imagine it was a Democratic presidency that did that. Yeah. What would Tybee and and Musk be saying right now? But like it's so stupid. No journalism of any kind. Like no kind of even just like not a fuck journalism. Just like let's talk civilian spidey senses. Like I, I remember once like one of my clients like, you know, giving me what the, the alibi was and then like immediately sending me like a compressed zip file of a fuck ton of screenshots to support and I was like <laughs> may you may you have compiled this? Was it <laughs> might there be an agenda here? Is this a, a little premeditated? Like <laughs> I'm like, so I'm just like Elon Musk, obviously the man is literally giving you a file of of you be trusted this is complete. This is this is accurate, no agenda here of any kind. Like it's laughable. Yeah, it well, is. Taibi is a spin doctor, so he gave it to Taibi because he knew that he would spin it in the way that Elon wants. But my favorite thing about this entire story is that Elon Musk is essentially admitting to everyone that he literally believes it's a First Amendment violation if Twitter removes pictures of Hunter Biden's nine-inch penis. Who who thinks like this? That's insane to me. But it's also hilarious at the same time. Like, it's not like nothing has come of this. Hilarity has come of this as well. And Matt, when you were describing, like, the introduction of Tybee's thread, it reminds me of when I'd read these, like, PoliSci 101 essays and they had to reach a certain, like, word requirement. They'd start off with this huge, long diatribe. Since the dawn of time, man has tried to find a way to govern themselves. But this is, like, what he did with Twitter. He's like, communication, Twitter, it's been the... <laughs> public square and like he wouldn't get to the point it was insufferable and you could see that reflected in some of the articles as well where the headline would be like um twitter files flop says taibi's long diatribe or whatever it's just the whole thing is hilarious it's a joke and anyone uh, like taibi and weiss who participated in it you think that they would be delegitimized but this gives them more credibility than ever since they're dropping this and the right is eating it up even if some right wingers are admitting that it's a flop like on fox news david did a great video about this how uh, they're kind of just admitting, mm, yeah, this wasn't necessarily the smoking gun that we were hoping for, which is telling when they admit that because they never admit things like that. Yeah. I'm looking at it now. Oh, this I, is I, really I, funny. Ba Barry Weiss tweeted out a screenshot of Twitter's back end that shows that, um, you know, libs of TikTok had some, uh, you know, things uh, uh, like uh, addendums, like labels put on her, uh, her account so that it, you know, certain tweets and things like that didn't trend. Um, you know, that's what. It, first I of all, they're supposed so. to. We're supposed to. We're, but we're I supposed to believe so. that's a bad that deal, right? That's, to be shut down. That that is like a, an account well, that is directly well, wait, targeting well, drag events and all that kind of shit. Well, wait for this. So, so she she tweets a screenshot of this backend, and it's supposed to prove that Twitter was biased against libs of TikTok. They should um, be. <laughs> but it says at the top. There's a giant warning at the top of this back end for Twitter employees to see that says, do not take action on this user without consulting and in the name of some special high up Twitter executive group. No way. So literally, Alejandro was TikTok right. got special oh treatment oh from Twitter. Oh my God, wow. Alejandro's right. Yeah. Oh, that's crazy. Okay. Okay. Well, so the that's, opposite that's of wild. What, the opposite of what these people believe. I mean, of, 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 all these people got special treatment. They have been screaming that for so long. It's the exact opposite. Oh, wow. Okay. That's ooh, that's going to be a cycle right that there. That actually is a that. bombshell. Twitter commissioned, that's huge. That is a bombshell. Twitter that commissioned a, a, a study, uh, I think uh, over a year ago now, two years ago. And it found, and this is an independent study, in a peer reviewed journal. Actually, the peer reviewed journal is called P, P, and PNAS, P N A S which I found funny because I was talking with Hunter Biden at the time. <laughs> I, I thought I thought penis. But it, was, yeah. it showcases that Twitter, the Twitter algorithm benefits the right. It props up right-wing politicians, props up right-wing news sources. My guess is for the same reason the al algorithm in, in other cases and other websites does is it, it often favors extremist content. People that are more extreme that tend to get, you know, more likes, that kind of thing. So exactly. that's their, their own external study showcase this. Every... I, how many times have you logged onto Twitter and you see some random conservative you've never seen in your life all of a sudden in your timeline recommended to you? Oh, yeah, Every single time. day I get these jackets. Way more now. Way more now. <laughs> I've I never I get why, anyone but... on the left in my timeline. It's so – it's it. we see it every day. We see it in the data. For them to try and claim otherwise, it's just the same the, the same gaslighting bullshit that they have done on every single every single issue. But it's yeah. I guess it's it's honestly a reflection of, of – 
everything else they do in their reality and their privilege, right? Like, it's the whole thing with the culture wars, which is really nothing. Their biggest plight is other people having a plight and wanting to do something about it. This is really a reflection of that. Because it. T- think about the life that you must be living when the only perceived slight or problem, the worst you're being treated, is by the Twitter, is by Twitter management in your mind. True. Like, that's the worst. <laughs> that's the worst anybody's fucking treating you. <laughs> like... Right across the bed, come on. Right, like theoretically, you think Twitter not fucking with your tweets like everybody else. Like that's your <laughs> that's your big gripe. Like I'm like, wow, like how how sweet life must be. <laughs> <laughs> that's so true. <laughs> also, I just want to point out that the entire thread is Barry Weiss showing the documents via taking a photo of her computer screen. She doesn't know how to take a screenshot. <laughs> what? Every single, every <laughs> single, every single one. Take a look. It's a whole thread of her taking I believe photos it. of her computer screen. Whoa. Oh, man. Barry Weiss rage quit the New York Times. And she is that the same Barry Weiss that I'm thinking of? The one who was like, cancel culture will come for us all. And it's going to come for me eventually. So I quit. Like, that. that's who we're talking about. Yeah. So, so, <laughs> okay. It, the me next that, person. That Jimmy Dore has more technical knowledge than Barry Weiss does. I know. <laughs> Even Jimmy Dore got the full <laughs> screenshot. <laughs> no, the next person who uh, Elon is going to give this to is definitely going to be Glenn Greenwald for sure. Uh, But Glenn Greenwald is even less tech savvy. I was watching one of his videos and he literally was trying to play a clip and he just held his entire laptop up to the camera and pressed play. (laughs) No fucking joke. Like, that's exactly what he did. That's adorable. Okay, that's adorable. Come on, don't take that away from him. (laughs) Let him him keep thinking that's fucking cool. (laughs) No one tell him. All right, shame on anybody who spreads Mm -hmm. it. That's not cool. Let him. Let his viewers watch it that way and he like he was holding it like that for the entire video it was like three minutes or something i can't remember but hilarious oh shit hilarious <laughs> shit i'm not very tech savvy i'm a boomer but even i know that that's not necessarily the best way to share a video with your audience where you're like here's my laptop that's really funny okay before the story goes away because he hasn't said anything matt i thought you were saving the best part but i'm, I'm gonna i'm gonna jump on this one if you don't know before the second twitter files was released there was a twitter supplemental that oh, came out i forgot out. all and, about and, that i, I know and the twitter twitter supplemental. Supplemental. Okay, this, this one is fucking hilarious this one's really really funny the twitter supplemental reveals and this is the big bombshell there was a person working at Twitter, a legal counsel who once worked for the FBI. Now, before you're all like, wait, what? That legal counsel called Jim Baker, who once worked for the FBI, apparently Elon Musk claims he has no idea who he was. He just found out this Sunday who he was. And immediately when he found out that this person who worked for the FBI actually had to oversee the first Twitter files, he fired him. It it was like no one told him and there was a canary in the coal mine. Uh, This is terrible. Turns out he's lying through his teeth. He knew exactly who he was because he responded to Mike Serenovich's like big tweet about it who explained exactly who the person was. So the second Twitter files is more embarrassing than the first. It's just Elon Musk lying that he didn't know who one of his legal counsels was, who was doing his job, which is to look over files as a legal counsel before the release to the public. It's like it's even more ridiculous. <laughs> I'm enjoying this, honestly. It's not a flop after all. It's a dub. <laughs> It, this is, uh, uh, it's it's like, this is it's so funny. It's so bad. Uh, but the problem is people are going to eat this up. Like, they're absolutely mm-hmm. going to eat this up and think that something's here. Um, but you know what? I mean, it's already it's sort of dying down. Like, they're taking so long to do this. I mean, Taibis, those, those early Taibi tweets got, like, massive engagement oh, yeah. on Friday night. And now it's already, like, they're barely able to to pull off what they did. But Matt, you went deep into this. What did you think that implied? I was like, this is one of two things. Either you, Elon Musk, who just bought the company, uh, just completely befuddled, like Mr. Magoo falling through your fucking way there, didn't know who was working for you as one of your top legal counsels, was like, oh, surprise. Oh, I had no idea this person was Jim Baker who worked at the FBI. That's the, the best case scenario. And anything else is like, you are just a foolish clown and you have fucked this up so bad along the way. You know? Right. I mean, I mean, how do you not know it was the guy being that he put his he put his name in the in the title of the document, the title of the like, document. <laughs> like he sent the guy's name is Jim Baker and he sent them in the, uh, a, a document that was titled something like Baker emails or something like that. <laughs> <laughs> oh, we have to also point out um, that in that Twitter thread, Taibi doxed two people. He revealed the personal okay, email seeing. address of Ro Khanna, his actual non-congressional email. It was his Gmail, I believe. And also the old Twitter CEO, Jack Dorsey, as well. How do you do this if you're a journalist? How do you do this? 
think you answered your own question. Yeah, you're not a real yeah, joke. If you're Good a point. journalist. <laughs> Good point. I'm, I'm just looking at these right now. Oh, she's already done. That was it. That was the big reveal. The to, A, Twitter, Barry Weiss's big reveal today from the Twitter files. Twitter shadow bans, something we've always known. Uh, photos of the back end of Twitter showing the different labels that they put out, which actually we got screenshots of that back in uh, July 2020 when um, the, you guys remember that teen hacker that got into the back end of Twitter and started tweeting from all these different big users accounts. Mm -hmm. yeah. Do you remember that? So those labels got leaked then. And I found a vice piece that literally runs down all the labels that we saw that day. And they're the same labels that Barry Weiss is apparently breaking today. Um, I guess the news would be the big reveal. There was something. Um, we now know that Twitter gave Libs of TikTok a special categorization that wouldn't let her be uh, moderated on unless I'm a so high council of Twitter so and Twitter executives uh, ruled on it. That's crazy. Yeah. Yeah. That, that account literally is a terror account that just 100%, 100%. terrorizes people. Yeah. And 100%. they're getting special treatment while the right is claiming that the left is getting special treatment. It's just it, up is down, left is right. Like they, they just they create a whole different reality and people go along with it. It's so frustrating. Imagine not believing like in like white privilege and like any like pr like benefits from like enslavement and all kind of like like whole big systemic shit. But believe in deep in your heart like Twitter's. Twitter is blood in the fucking gangs, you. Twitter what? has got a, mat Twitter has a material <laughs> disadvantage. <laughs> <laughs> it's fucking ridiculous. Like, yeah, yeah. Is it time for a pivot? Yes. Got, got one. Her. All right, I got it. I've got the responses open, so I'm kind of filtering through and looking at stuff. Please. So, mm. all right. So here's one a question that's coming from Comrade Tyler who says, what is with the selective patriotism of conservatives? I'm a vet myself, and I'm absolutely disgusted with the discourse around Griner, which someone else points out, which is Tyler, says, thoughts on Brittany Griner's release and the right wing's reaction to it. So do we have any thoughts about this? Yeah, I mean... Ole, you had a good video. I want, I want you to go. Oh, yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, okay. Um, they're fucking racist. Uh, they are they're like that. That's thank you. That's yeah. thank you. What's up? Plain like, and simple. End scene. Roll credits. Yeah, that's it. <laughs> Finn, Finn, and we're done. That's left the swampy, everybody. That's, that's, that's what it is. <laughs> they're experiencing. Honestly, it's a beautiful example of intersection of bigotry, right? Because on both sides, like you see, you see, um, from the side of black people, fellow black people complaining, and that's because like that are adopting the bullshit and eating up these talking points that were literally crafted at the top of the fucking morning um, because homophobia, because homophobia, because this is a black lesbian woman that is not a femme that they are not attracted to. And so they ultimately don't give a fuck because they were never having these conversations. When, when Trump was getting ASAP Rocky out, we weren't having these conversations. Mm -hmm. There was no deep dive into what the fuck needed to happen to get him out. No one was talking about ASAP was being held accountable because he was fighting or whatever. No one was talking none of this shit. So at the end of the day, it's disingenuous and that's what is being motivated over there. And then from the side of your usual racist, who good old fashioned racism and, and all the bigotry associated with also homophobia on that side. And then it blended together to create a pot of talking shit, a bunch of talking shit into the general like disingenuous arguments that have been raised. Let me just get them out of here real quick. Arms dealer, arms dealer, arms dealer. <laughs> oh, <laughs> arms dealer. <laughs> now, I know y'all don't read. I know y'all don't read, but y'all don't watch Snowfall either. Like nothing y'all don't know. Like, this right here, America, that's the arms deal. All this shit y'all talking about, that number one, baby. You're number one. Okay? You're number one. No one comes close. So, like, you notice how y'all don't know any other fucking arm dealers? Y'all don't know no arms dealer's name? That's not a usual thing. We've never been having conversations about arms dealers because they, they're left to do their business <laughs> without a fucking problem, okay? That talking point was crafted for y'all this morning. Ooh, arms dealer. Also, additionally, this whole... <sighs> Furthermore, then, then, then the next arguments of of um, this is not an equivalent. This is not an equivalent trade. Okay, guys, like 
straw man whistle leg dog whistle into the highest form this whole this whole discussion of um worth and then conveniently throwing out this white man that y'all were not champion yesterday this whole time this britney grinder stuff has been happening y'all were not championing this man that name was thrown out today all of a sudden now y'all found a white man to argue oh he should be free his worth is more important than this black woman get the fuck out of here and then all the other arguments um about oh all these other people that deserve to be freed and blah 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 yeah yeah absolutely correct yeah, there are 2 million people incarcerated in this country alone. There are all kinds of people, political prisoners everywhere. There are people in Russia um, being in prison that should be freed. That doesn't change the fact that this woman should be freed too. There's nothing, there's no world we ever live in where we go, oh, that person got justice? That's a fucking problem. Because look at all these other people that didn't get justice. Let's give justice to nobody. That's a bullshit, stupid argument. And y'all would never accept that level of bigotry if it was coming um, in any other capacity. If we were talking about, like, think about how silly it is. And to, and to the overall argument they've been making, like, oh, the only reason she's getting this is because, you know, she's a WNBA player. Okay. She is not getting this because she's a WNBA player, and y'all fucking know that. As a matter of fact, she's only in this position because she's a WNBA player. That's the only reason she was in Russia playing in the first goddamn place, so let's keep it real. Mm -hmm. The reason this is happening is because, yeah, people galvanized. Her friends, her family, her loved ones, her team, people, this became a political issue, galvanized around it because she is a political prisoner. Yeah, you're right. That's literally how shit goes. How many, think about the very few victims of police brutality you've heard of in comparison to the over a thousand people are killed by police every year. Think about how many you hear about. Think about how many get any justice. And you, your response is never when George Floyd, when the officers were convicted in George Floyd, you didn't go, but they didn't fucking convict anybody and this shouldn't happen. It doesn't make sense and you know it. So you're really just tapping into bigotry. It's disingenuous. It's foolishness. This is a good thing. Thank God the woman is coming home because otherwise we would exist in a world where we know it's a tragedy, you know, we know it's fucked up. And nine years later, she would still be there serving time. So this is a good thing. Mm -hmm. If there was a hostage situation, like any hostage situation, and uh, like all of a sudden they're like, they're releasing one of the hostages, in what world would people be like, oh, wait, no, 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 not that one. <laughs> like, yeah. Oh, hold on, hold on. Wait, wait, who else was available? What what else do we have in the back? Well, can we check? Right. Can, I get, can, I, can I just go through the character selection screen and then see what I can pick? <laughs> ah, ooh, yeah, we kind of missed out on that. I don't know. This feels like a loss for the country. You know, this one hurts. This one cuts deep. Goddamn. Right. <laughs> right. Like, it's not like uh, the U.S. has a you know a Russian locked up on on marijuana. You know what I mean? Like there's there's no equivalent there. So like if they're gonna, <laughs> if they're gonna have a prisoner exchange, which is the only way to get these people out, it's gonna be someone who's a little high profile, regardless of who it is. Yeah. So it's a, to complain is just it's people grasping at straws. And unfortunately, I think you're right. People get sucked into these arguments and they think they're being noble when in reality they're just being tricked. And yeah. I saw a lot of it in, in my comments as well, which kind of surprised me because my audience, nor, you know, normally isn't this stupid. But <laughs> there were some comments <laughs> that are just were completely disconnected, and it's it's unfortunate. But like, the the only I don't know if this is like the, the only criticism that makes any I don't agree with it, but I, I get where people are coming from is that it it legitimizes uh, Russia kidnapping people because then they can try and get you know more of their people out. I, I guess is the idea, but. They're going to kidnap people anyways. Like they're, they're taking people, locking mm -hmm. them up and regardless. They're doing it now, even before these, you know, exchange or before this exchange happened. So to claim that this one exchange now means that Russia is going to lock up more people or going to, you know, trap more Americans is, I think, just empty. Mm -hmm. If you're going to look at a picture, if we're going to look at a picture, we have to look at a full picture. This idea, whatever we want to paint, like <laughs> at the end of the day. Rush, the reason why they're able to engage in this barter system is because this is what the fuck they do. Both of these countries lock people up as political prisoners. America, we know, locks Americans up as political prisoners, all right? So this whole idea like, oh, Russia just out here doing wild fuck shit, and this is the first opportunity the U.S. has ever gotten to make a position known, and now, oh, no, oh, now Russia's enabled. This been how they do business. Okay, we just are not, not normally in the fucking discussion. We are only privy to this particular conversation, this particular trade, because this was a social, it was a social movement, you know what I mean, that push, pushed it to being, you know what I mean, at the forefront and something that's being done, and Biden is responding to, you know, a perceived something that would get goodwill. That's, that's mm -hmm. what's happening here. But this whole idea, I'm like, they already do this. They already does this, baby. Like, this is, like, the whole legitimize. And I also want people to, like, we have to be careful not to become... 
we can't be so in the clouds, so in theory, and so in our idealistic world that we let real fuck shit happen. At the end mm-hmm. of the day, that's a real human being, right? Like, this real one person is in fucking jail and would be exposed to, what, 10 years in a Russian prison and every fucking traumatic, horrible thing that comes along with that. Her family, her loved ones, those people, every, all those people are real people that would experience that. There is no reason to be so theoretically in the clouds, you know what I mean, about hypotheticals and stuff that you just say, Ah, it's not fucking worth it. Like, oh, this is a bad thing. Why are we engaging? Wait, we're engaging Russia in, in, in this case because this is a real human being. Like, this is a, that's, that's what yeah. it is. And I need people to, like, acknowledge that. Yeah, they're I just basically admitting that, that they don't Imagine care. Locked up there. That's the like, thing. Like, when you, you see do? these comparisons between, like, the white Marine and yes. the black gay woman, I mean, the subtext is that her life is less valuable than this black Marine. And they're trying to say everything without saying that, like they're skirting around it, but we know exactly what they mean by it. It's all about devaluing her and trying to make it seem as if, you know, she doesn't care. And, And one thing is that people are trying to make it seem as if she's guilty because she brought the cannabis oil. She went to Russia multiple times. Russia Mm -hmm. just randomly chose to uh, take her into custody because they are trying to fuck with the United States, barter back and forth. So, you know, relations have deteriorated. So it was she's the week just before the invasion, actually. So I, I think oh, it was like it was a political. They, there was definitely some, some, you know, reason there for them. Yeah, to that she's, time she's to do just it. a pawn. So to, to uh, you know, try to ascribe guilt to her. It's just again, I, like she's getting demonized because she's a black gay woman. It's that simple. Also- it's such a dangerous, the underlying rationale is so dangerous to adopt because what you're saying is, you're saying that all the people that go, oh, well, she she's being held accountable or she's not wrongfully incarcerated or, or so, oh, you know, she's guilty of it or whatever. What you're saying is that a government, if a government imposes a law, no matter how unjust that law is or how disproportionate the sentence is, that is fine. That is permissible. That underlying fucking rationale is why you're living in a country filled of mass incarceration, yeah. that that mass, that massively incarcerated your people into bondage. That would be a fucking ridiculous answer. And you would know. And this is what I don't like when I, I hate to see black and people of color fall into like white supremacist talking point framings that hurt us in other contexts. Because if we were talking about a black person being wrongfully, you know, if we were talking about a, we wouldn't care. Let me put it this way we wouldn't give a fuck if Khalif Prouder had stolen the backpack it would change nothing we would know that was wrongful that he was incarcerated at Rikers we, we would know it was wrongful everything that he was abused regardless we would never have that argument but you make it in these contexts because what it really boils down to is this is other to you you are not feeling the same level of of solidarity we would feel with a black person because this is a uh, a, a black gay woman and that's really what the tea is because yeah. we would never accept this framing otherwise and this framing is overall dangerous and harmful to us and it's scary when you allow yourself to be tricked into to aligning with the white supremacists today you know what I mean oh yeah we're gonna be arguing the same shit as the white supremacists because they're gonna use and flip all of that back on you and say look you know what I mean the same the same logic that you you refuse to acknowledge the bigotry in it today because today the bigotry is directed towards this gay woman, right? But on another day when it's directed towards us, you'll have a problem with that. So that's my biggest issue with it. Yeah, yeah, that beautifully put. One thing that I've just got to point out to throw in some rage bait is Tommy Loren's tweet probably pissed me off the most because she said something to the effect of, oh, well, oh, well now that, you know, you're back, uh, uh, is she still going to kneel, you know, during the national anthem? Yeah. Is she going to respect <laughs> our country? I, I can't handle these people. I hate these people so much. Yeah. You haven't suffered enough. Yeah. Uh, look at what this country did to you. Are you still going to uh, disrespect the flag? It's like, I can't take it. Like, I, I honestly, I, I can't handle these people. Oh, my God. I wish they would fucking, like, wipe, like, oh, my, this goddamn flag. Like, right? Uh, honestly, this is why it's important to, it's important to dole out ass whoopings to people as a child. No, it really is. Because, no, you have to go through life like you might get fucked up. Like, you have to be aware that that's kind of the consequence. Like, I talk a lot of shit because I got hands. Like, if you want it, like, if you want it, you got it. Like, they cannot, you would not go around talking about people bold and crazy like this or whatever if you just, if you knew there might be some repercussions. It's absurd. Like, sometimes the way these people just go out of their way to be dickheads is absurd, just absurd. You could just shut the fuck up. Like, you you could. You know what I mean? You mm-hmm. could not be tapped in like this. And you have to be a fucking hater to be glued into this level to something that you, like, don't support. You don't care about the woman's feeling. Like, what are you talking? Like, you have to find something to be negative. The, f- the flag, is she going to kneel? I don't yeah. know. Maybe not, bro. She's been, like, I, I, I yeah. like, maybe fucking not. Like, it, mm, think about this, right? If if prior to if prior 
prior to some bullshit, right, to being taken as a political prisoner and leveraged as a political prisoner, I thought America moved unjustly towards Black people. And then I am put in a position where I realize, hmm, this is also a direct mirror of exactly how, in fact, America does, in fact, treat Black people. And now I've been a political prisoner again, talked about like a dirty dog, called everything but a child of God by all these racists, all these bigots for months. Perhaps I might not kneel for the flag. Perhaps I'm not fucking with the flag. I hope that the first thing that she does when she gets back is burns the flag just so they can get pissed <laughs> off. That would be amazing if she just like stepped on it and spit on it and burned it just to be like, fuck you. Like, that's where I'm at mentally. From the top of my lungs, like I would, y'all would hand me reverberate off the walls laughing and carrying on if she did such a thing. <laughs> would... They would lose their fucking minds, son. Lose their goddamn minds. Oh. They they really give it up too crazy about the flag, son. I'm mm-hmm. like, it's it's not this, it's not this deep. Y'all y'all have to stop. Yeah, the Vicky Hart still would cry. Uh, the guy that was released yeah, over the summer, the summer. Um, through a, 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 an exchange, he, uh, yeah. sorry, I'm hearing myself on Echo, it's, it's messing yeah, up. Yeah, I'm hearing it too, it's echoing all of a sudden. Uh, the, the guy that, that was released over the summer on exchange, um, when he came back, he, he criticized Joe Biden immediately <laughs> for not doing more to release more people. And so I'm just imagining, like, imagine if Brittany Griner does that. Like they will, they would flip out. But there was barely any peep. Actually, no. You know who covered it? Fox News. Fox News covered it to 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 criticize Joe Biden. But like, <laughs> but there was barely any coverage on this. But like, it's it, he, he's right. Like, there's a lot more. I imagine. I mean, again, I, I don't know. I'm not in the room. But I can imagine this guy is privy to more information. He apparently said he can't talk about. You know what he knows. But there's more that Biden should be doing that he knows about. It Biden can do to release more people, and Biden simply uh, at this point isn't isn't doing it. Mm-hmm. Yeah. yeah, but yeah, that's basically. But that's the danger in like treating teaching people that their government is doing them a favor, which is what America does, right? America like convinces people that it asking their government to deliver on needs to give them anything is a welfare state. Is you you know that it's a very like you should be grateful for the government doing anything for you when in actuality it's like no you give power to the government so that they mm-hmm. serve your needs. Um and that's basically an ultimate reflection of that this idea that like rather than it be be considered the government's responsibility to take to save civilians that have been taken as political prisoners or are wrongfully incarcerated, rather than you look at that as the government doing what they are supposed to do, you look at it as the government doing them a favor. So you should be forever grateful and indebted, especially if it's your black ass, because you don't deserve nothing, is basically the argument. And that's how they're going to move. So she said, I am. I would bet my good money she's going to come out and be incredibly like express grateful gratitude and then just don't say nothing. You know what I mean? For a while she's going to give a, a very grateful statement or whatever. She's not going to say nothing because a black person knows exactly. You don't have the, you don't have the, the, you're not given the, the freedom. You're not given the freedom to be critical like that. The way that white guy could have done that and we don't hear about that. There's no way she can do that. Mm-hmm. It ain't going to happen. Yeah. 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 Great point. Um, on the subject of like right wingers raging, I, I just have to at least I'd be remiss to not mention Vicky Hartzler again, the lady who cried, uh, encouraging all of her Republican colleagues to vote against the Respect for Marriage Act. Like something like that normally would piss me off, but I genuinely enjoyed watching that. And I've watched the video now like 10 times and I feel like it's really fueling me today. It, it's just these people are so petty. So they're such losers that you you almost feel sorry for them, but I don't. Um, but it's just I have to I have to point that out because that was really if you haven't seen it, folks, go watch the video. We've all probably done videos on it by now. Vicky Hartzler. <laughs> yeah, I, I put one up too. She was crying, trying to get everyone to vote against the Respect for Marriage Act, and they did it anyway. So she's gonna be crying herself to sleep. And um I, I am just happy thinking about her crying about it. It's it's Do you it's know why it's enjoyable? Hilarious. It's because she's losing. Like True. If, if she was crying and winning, I think we would be pissed about it. Yeah. But because she's losing, uh, the public perception, of course, on gay marriage is is well in support of it. Uh, of course, they're losing now in terms of legislation, uh, and have been for a while. So this is yeah, they they just keep losing on this. And actually, so I, I covered the story. Her her nephew is gay, oh. and he is now part of the lawsuit that is trying to. Uh, I think it's reverse Title Nine, that is about um. 
uh, colleges that can that can essentially discriminate against people that are gay, uh, like mm. uh, Catholic colleges. So she has like her, this guy's entire family, including his aunt, have been this way their entire lives, and only like recently have his parents accepted him, but still won't accept that he's like they'll accept that he's gay, but they won't. They, they love him despite him, despite his sexuality. Mm. So this guy, like, he's currently living this, and to have an aunt, like, to have Jesus. someone so close to you, and you still do not get it, like, I don't understand how these people still operate. Like, I've had I, that. I don't, I don't know how you go through life, this brainwash, this this hateful. It's it's crazy to me. Yeah, I've had that same conversation from cousins and aunties. It's like, well, you know, I I accept you, love the sin, but you know, uh, love the sinner, but not the sin. Where it's like, oh well, thank you so much. I guess I'll go fuck myself. That's so kind. <laughs> like you should be how, gracious for their support. Yeah, how open minded of you. I, I mean, I just yeah, like all all of that. Like, I get that because my family's very fucked up too. Like not my immediate family, but like aunts and uncles and stuff are very fucked up. Um, and I'm, I'm somebody who's like very petty and I hold grudges. So like my auntie who I was very close to, all she had to do was like, she called me filth or something. That was what she said on Facebook. She said, you're filth. And I'm like, fuck you auntie. And I haven't spoken to her since. Um, because I'm sorry, like you, when you're younger, yeah, the power is not on your side. Right. So like when I first came out, I was really worried that I'd get kicked out. Um, you know, I was economically dependent on my parents and whatnot, but as you get older, that power dynamic flips and you eventually get all the power to where you're the one who can reject them for them trying to reject you. And that's something that I try to tell like younger trans and, and uh, gay kids, because it's not always going to be bad. Like the whole it's, it gets better campaign. It really is true because eventually you're going to be in a position to where you can tell all these family members to go fuck themselves. And it's going to feel very good. So like the pain that you're feeling currently is temporary. You will be in a better position later on. And everything that they're doing is going to come back to bite them in the ass. Like that lady, Vicky Hartzler, who was crying about this, like she's going to die miserable and alone and everybody's going to remember her for the bigot that she is. So uh, I, I think that's a great point that David made that like the reason why it's so satisfying is because we are winning. Like if I saw that clip in 2010, I would be raging about it for weeks. But like it put a smile on my face today because to see bigots lose, it, it just it is heartwarming, honestly. I mean, they're still like they're trying to they know that they've lost on marriage equality, which is why they're focusing on trans kids and other issues and the whole groomer bullshit. Uh, but the way that we like gave them the death blow so quickly and like ramped up support uh, support for marriage equality really that is huge i mean like to think back uh in the early 90s bill clinton signed the uh, defense of marriage act into law and that was the compromise that democrats overwhelmingly supported because it was either they ban marriage equality at the federal level or we get a constitutional amendment to ban marriage equality which is what the republicans were pushing so to see that we went from that in the 90s to now in the 20s just completely repealing it and repudiating that it does feel really good, and that's why these bigots are crying. So I, I love it. It, it was, it was enough to give me hopium for the day. Um, I'll, I'll be back to being doomer tomorrow. But seeing the crying, it was her tears were very delicious, and it fueled me. <laughs> well, I will say there's a couple questions, um, not really related to the topic, but Mike, people are asking about your sweater. Oh, really? <laughs> never went about the sweater. Looks cozy. Um, yeah, I bought it like a couple of weeks ago because I've been wearing the same like winter sweater for like ten years. So I bought it. It was like 20 bucks. I got it out of Kroger. Yeah. Wow. Thank you, folks. I usually am not the one who gets commended for my fashion. So I, <laughs> I like really it. appreciate I that. I saw a couple questions in the in the forums. But wow. then to pivot back into something darker, um, talking about just kind of what's happening with the LGBTQ community in general, um, here's kind of a question that may be more hypothetical, not so much a topic per se, but there's obviously a lot around it. So this question comes from Chef Dean, and they ask, what is the acceptable level of death for the right? Is there a number? How many should die from COVID, abortion bans, capitalism, limited welfare, or socioeconomic problems? How many people need to die from police brutality, imprisonment, unlimited gun ownership, and war? All, all, all of them. And I'll, they're, sure. they are, they are fine with all of the deaths. And I'll tell you why. Because each and every one of those topics that you listed they they exist purely based on an underlying rationale of hate for a particular group, every single one, right? Like whether it be women, whether it be black people, whether it be gay people, whether it be other, the underlying rationale that fosters the particular issue, they couch it around is just a hatred of that particular thing. The reason why they don't care, they're not motivated when they see uh, videos of black people being killed and the first thing they do is go and vilify that black person 
is because they're com- they they that is the result that they are comfortable with seeing. They know that all libs of TikTok is a hate account. They see what it's been being what it galvanizes. They literally see hate crimes happening um um at LGBT clubs. They see this. They know that death is the result of these things. That is the point. That is literally quite literally the point. The problem is is you know we live in a society that does not want to acknowledge cannot face the truth of the magnitude of having what is ultimately one of two major parties literally be couched and in, in, in based in bigotry, based in fascism. But that is the transparent truth. The answer to is how many deaths that will make that, that's, that's the point. They are comfortable, mm-hmm. not just comfortable, but happy. That is ultimately the goal. That is why you spew hate. Have you ever seen um, any, any, any hate crime committed as a result of these views and they, they walk it back? Do they say, oh, no, I didn't realize that this would lead to this. I I apologize. That's that's not what they say. That's not the energy you get from them. So that's my answer. There's no amount of deaths that will make them change anything because that is the ultimate desire. Yeah. And just to add to that, it's important that we acknowledge this, because for me, I spent a large portion of my life thinking that all we needed to do was educate these people, give them facts. Like when it comes to the issue of trans healthcare, it's like, okay, if we explain to them that gender affirming care for trans youth is medically necessary because it saves lives, then that's all it's gonna take. Once they learn that, they'll wake up. But as we can see, they don't care. They know what they do with the Club Q shooting. Immediately, they're essentially saying, fuck around and find out. I mean, that's what Tim Pool tweeted out. Um, Oh, they had a grooming event. So they basically deserved it. So you have to acknowledge where they're at and what they want because it allows you to respond accordingly. These are people who are literally pro-death and we can't treat them as good faith actors who just need to change their hearts and open up their minds. That's not possible. They're pro-death and we have to resist in any way that we can and fight, fight back against it. Word. Well, and I guess maybe to add to that a little bit on a personal level, I talked about this a little bit with my chat last week, um, but I live in Colorado and I actually have friends in Colorado Springs including some of my acquaintances, um, were one of, one of the bartenders at Club Q. Um, and I was actually supposed to be there that night, too, which is a little wow, ominous. Um, I was down in the Springs visiting a couple friends because, long story short, they said there was a tiki bar downtown that opened up, and they're like, we got to go to this tiki bar. So I was like, okay, yeah, we'll go. And we were supposed to go there, and we ended up stopping to go get Waffle House because one of the friends were hungry. And so we're like, oh, yeah, yeah. So we're texting the bartender, Daniel, for those of you who are familiar with the names, We said, hey, we're going to probably be there around like 1130 or so. We just wanted to stop and get Waffle House. Little did we know we had essentially missed the shooting by 30 minutes. Um, Wow. The reality is, right, so I unfortunately have a personal perspective to this. And Colorado Springs, if, if for anyone who knows about Colorado in general, is like the little red dot in an otherwise blue state. And it is really, really red in um in El Paso County essentially which is where Colorado Springs is and it is terrifying in what happened the days weeks even going on right now like the amount of open hate that's just around in Colorado Springs is insane and to them this is normal and this is totally okay so when uh focus on the family which is also located in the springs was defaced i wanted to go down and see it um just cuz i was like hey i can actually go see this in person um that was like a big issue and stuff. And there's all these big trucks, you know, that do the the coal rolling thing that they run around town with their don't tread on me flags everywhere. And, you know, you see the Joe Biden did that stickers on the gas pumps. Like it is a trip to be in Colorado Springs. I, I just it, it's literally going to another dimension and seeing another level of hate just be normalized every day. And sure, people are nice to me, but I'm a white woman. And I've seen that with my other friends who are not white women or white men hang around or do something. And you can definitely see there's a difference. And there's times where I have to kind of not like step in for my friends, but essentially be there and be like, hold on, they're with me. Like, you need to stop this. Like, what the fuck is this about? And it's a weird, weird city. Uh, If anyone in any of the chats has been around Colorado Springs, I'm pretty sure everyone knows exactly this. Just, I don't know what to call this mentality but it, it, this hateful mentality and to mm. see it play out as if it's its own unique town is really quite horrific, to be honest with you. I've never felt something like that. Wow. Are all your friends okay after everything that happened? Um. Well, obviously I have some friends that obviously had friends in there. So no, people are not okay. I've kind of been spending my time comforting those friends 
Mm. Um, you know, obviously we can't change what happened, but to then find out essentially, um, I saw from a TikTok, I shared it on Twitter that now there's something from one of the school districts in the Springs too, that are now talking about segregating one of the school districts because a parent asked a question or something like that and emailed a, uh, um, I don't know, one of the administrators or something like, I don't know what is going on in Colorado Springs, but I, they're not okay. Whatever is going on. And it's, it's weird that I can drive an hour and 20 minutes essentially south and and go to this weird land where everybody just hates you for the freedom to be yourself. It is the strangest thing in the entire world. It's fucked. Yeah. Did you hear the new revelation, Blair, that apparently uh, the, uh, the shooter uh, was running like a neo-Nazi forum website? that may be connected to yet another neo-Nazi forum website. And the FBI is currently investigating that. Like NBC just reported on that. Oh, and I was like, yes. hmm. well, I was like, the layers just keep going deeper and deeper. Like so many people on the right tried to convince everyone that like, hey, by the way, apparently this person is non-binary. And I believe this is someone who's in the LGBTQ plus. So this wasn't a hate crime, blah, blah, blah. And then meanwhile, it's like, well, the neighbor says that they use the F slur all the time. And the dad was basically relieved that, uh, you know, not the fact that they had murdered five people, but that they weren't gay. That's pretty mm -hmm. telling. And like all these things are adding up. And then during the like the initial court proceedings, uh, the lawyer was using he, him pronouns exclusively. So even if they do, uh, want to say that uh, they were non-binary they're not respecting it openly in the courtroom and then that new one just came out apparently they were running a fucking far-right neo-nazi website it's like i i don't know how many things you need to stack before like does someone have to have like a swastika tattooed on their forehead and hold up like i hate gay people and then some people on the right might be like oh okay okay well all right fair enough fair enough this was far-right well, radicalization you know we <laughs> we saw it with kanye right like they wouldn't they would not acknowledge that he was clearly anti that there was he was a hateful person he was a nazi until he said that he was a nazi like they would until, not until he said i love Hitler. they would not yeah, take him down <laughs> until he said it himself and he said he loves hitler they would I love not hitler. so like that that's the this is what we talked about i think last week a bit like they will they will run on plausible deniability as long as possible until it is like said out like as clearly as kanye said it they will defend anybody until they say it as clearly as he did and you you see it every time like these people are obviously obvious bigots obvious hateful people and they keep defending they keep pretending but they know they of course of course they know they're just full of yeah. shit that, but that's the problem with constantly framing the conversations as though, like, we need their agreement. Like, we always act like we need people to confess to shit. That's why it's always this conversation about what's in people's hearts. Because even after Kanye said all that shit, people are still trying to say he's not, he doesn't mean it as hard as, like... No oh, God. You know what I mean? This whole this whole idea, and that's and because that's the rationale that allows him to get away with everything. Like, how many people do you know identify as a racist? Like, I am a racist. I am a bigot. I am a homophobe. That's not how that goes, right? And that allows them to constantly evade that you know that accountability, that culpability, and that's something I always recognize that a lot about America because you know I was raised in the Bahamas, and Bahamians are not like that. Bahamians will wear being fucked up. Like, like my daddy, I'm like, oh, my daddy is a real misogynist. We don't gotta, we don't gotta, we don't gotta run around. On the topic, like going in the house, I'm like, ooh, daddy, that's homophobia. That is homophobia. <laughs> and, my, and my daddy is not in the house trying to argue me down. <laughs> in fact, you know what I mean? They just they just rally around their bigotry and try to sell you on it. Like, no, no, good bigotry. But they acknowledge it as that, you know? So I'm like, that, that that's a lot of what America does. It's this game of constant cat and mouse. Because if you can never get them to confess, and, you know, and, you're, and your objective in your mind is to get them to confess, you never actually have to address anything or any of the problems substantively. Well, and that's the problem is we still try to approach this from a logical humanistic perspective. And the reality is sometimes the intent doesn't fucking matter anymore. It it just doesn't matter. I don't care if you think that Kanye maybe didn't mean it or whatever. He still said it. He put that out there and he's garnered that attention. He's done it. The conversation's over. Mm -hmm. You spit in. Exactly. Yeah, your, your, your impact is what matters. Like when you have a platform and you have power, whether you're a politician, someone in the media, what you do with your votes as a politician, what you do, what you say in public, how you use your platform, that's what matters. You can't go around and say, oh, well, I personally, I believe that I believe differently or I, I was doing this to, to, to keep my seat as a politician. I don't actually believe that you can't do like who doesn't matter what you personally or what you pretend you personally uh, how you feel or, or even if you felt that way. What matters is how you actually used your power when you have it. And if you use your power to do bad things, then you're a bad person. End of story. Yeah. The problem is that's the, you know I was gonna say this earlier when we were when we were discussing um, the Republican crying about about the the law. Um, 
it doesn't even shock me or I don't even find even the inconsistency is not striking to me that she would have a gay nephew and be moving like this because what I've recognized from being behind the curtains, like I have been, I've lived in Florida, West Virginia, Ohio, and New York. I went to boarding school in West Virginia. I know all of the Republicans, all the MAGA people. I went to law school. I know all the prosecutors. I know all the politicians. I know the this, I know the media people. And what I have noticed is they will live an entirely different life that is completely inconsistent with the politics that they espouse on shows or wherever have you or what they advocate for because what they and this is a word this is the white the white boys that used to say bigoted shit to me in law school and act like we're having you know a nice old conversation they would call it an intellectual exercise and that always struck me Mm. because that is what it is for them they are they are garnering in you know theory teams they've picked but they don't live they are very divorced from this as a reality the real life implications they are usually so privileged out of it so class out of it so economically you know disassociated with it they don't give a flying fuck how what they advocate affects the whole because it doesn't impact them at all so from her perspective i would not be shocked if she isn't even if she doesn't even treat him bad you know what i mean her mm-hmm. nephew if like because this is her nephew it's for the rest of you gays you know what i mean mm-hmm. like that's the energy that they have and i know that i like i know listen the amount of rep- like re- like gay men that i know person like personally that will be up here es- espousing anti-lgbt republican shit straight out out in the public in their politics and i'm just like Look at them. And you know why? Because it doesn't affect them. They don't ever know the shit. That's always something I realize when you talk about, when you start talking about what it is, like, they'll, everyone's having these conversations about the working class, about the middle class, this, but none of these fucking people having the conversations are a part of those in actuality. The minute you start talking numbers with the working class is really making your real life, they, you know what I mean? They are actually trying to pull up any kind of, like, plight or any anecdotal shit. They've got nothing to offer. So that's really, that's really what it is. They're just, they're divorced from it. It's just, mm-hmm. they're on teams. Like, oh, yeah, 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 that's my, my team. <laughs> my team, my team needs this, but my nephew, he good, he's straight. Like this, he's yeah. gonna, he gonna be good. No, that, that's so true. She, you know that that's how she rationalizes it. Yes. My nephew isn't like these loud gays that just flaunt their sexual orientation. I've had people <laughs> say that to me. Like I think I'm fifty fifty. I think sometimes I pass as straight. Most of the time I don't. But like when I worked and my sexuality would come up in front of like a customer or something they'd be like oh i didn't know you were gay you're not like these other gays that flaunt it and i'm like what does that even mean first of all like i don't know what you're that one means. of the good gays yeah it's like I, thank you, you. i mean gay, I, don't, I don't know okay? how i'm supposed you, to react you restrict to that your gay you pull the gay in okay oh. you have yeah. common decency <laughs> it, it, That's it, how I, i've i've been i have been the the they have tried to, to token black me many a times in my life um, so I, I, I'm very accustomed to it. I actually, I had a white friend, my, um, I, I went to a, went to a prom in my senior year of high school with a white boy in boarding school, West Virginia. I was the only black girl in my class. There were nobody. <laughs> you had to be with the whites. So like, just, we put that out there before anybody starts. No propaganda. <laughs> like, but anyhow, like, I remember his family freaked out. They're like, oh, you need to come home at once. Seek wise counsel, blah, 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 blah. Like, I, I'm telling you, they made me drive up, take my auntie and my uncle and drive up to bumfuck Ohio to hear about how the Bible says that we are the cursed people of Ham and shit. Yes, dead to my face, Jesus son. Jesus Christ. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But I remember when they came to the conclusion when they were like, oh, well, she's black, but at least she's not African-American. I'm like, and they're like, oh, she's a this guy. I'm like, oh, my God. Yeah, 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 yeah. Trust me, that's light shit. You don't know the kind of shit. Listen, I'm telling you, when I say I've been behind the veil of West Virginia, I tell you, Ohio, I was like, I've, I, I, I've heard some shit to my face. And I'm like, appalled. So, yeah, and they don't they think do there's that. anything wrong with the, what they're saying. That's what makes no, it so crazy. You. They are complimenting you. You're the chosen. <laughs> yeah. They're like, oh, they're like, oh, I know. Despite your disposition as a Negro, you know what I mean? Like, you know, wow. you're at a... You're at a technical it's advantage so with your insane. Negro status, but um, as far as Negroes go, you're not so bad. I'm like, oh, wow, that's crazy. Meanwhile, I'm the worst. I'm the worst of the worst. I like all the all the things that they like generally don't like. I like what they have to say when they start. I'm like, hmm, me, the loudest, most opinionated Negro you ever did meet. Very much so on the blackity <laughs> black 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 agenda. I'm like sitting there like, mm-hmm. you gonna figure me out in about a millisecond, like. <laughs> God, people are really uh, fucked up. <laughs> yes. That's that's my conclusion. Yeah. All right. Well, okay, here's a topic for more fucked up shit. Um, how about the attempted far right coup that happened in Germany yesterday? 
Has anyone been reading up on that at all? I actually did uh, not see. I mean, I saw it, but I, I didn't look I, too much I, into I, it. I yeah. have. I have. This this is okay. a great combination What's, of all those things. Well, here's the thing. There's a lot of, let's just say, they want to return to the glory of the Weimar Republic kind of online radicalized okay. slash right-wing militias that you find the similar to what you find in Canada. Here we call it the Knights of Odin, or you call it, uh, uh, what's the other one, Diagonal Group and other stuff. In America, you guys call it, what, Three Percenters, Proud Boys, Boogaloo Boys, uh, you know, take your pick, all that kind of stuff. It's one of those orgs that got to the point where they actually were on the verge of committing an act of violence. They had about 25 individuals armed and ready to overthrow the government. Government. Um, it's a mix of two things. One, it's clown shoes. You can laugh at the fash kind of thing because it's very LARPy. Like a lot of them were wearing full on like Kaiser helmets in their photos and stuff like that. And they're like, you know, one of them is literally a, a descendant of a prince. That's what also makes it kind of funny. One of them is like literal, like a descendant of royalty. And he wants to return the like the royal incestuous bloodline to be the proper like dictators of Germany. So that part is all kind of funny and silly. The, the, the scarier thing is that like this kind of stuff is happening globally. And while it is kind of fun to laugh at it it's also like a serious problem that seems to keep happening like you know between all like the u.s has all these like uh, did you see robert evans today he was tweeting out there was multiple power outages in florida like multiple ones as well as across the united states from what looks to be like militias shooting power plants and stuff like it's it's happening at such a dramatic increase based on what it used to happen in the past that it's something that we should probably study, look at, or at least be a little worried about. So that's why I, I kind of always go back and forth. Part of me is like, it's kind of funny that that they were super LARPy and there's that comedy side of it. But it's also like, you know, it, it is a potential danger the more times people do this. Sorry, pre-Weimar. Yeah, you're right. Pre-Weimar Republic. Like the Bismarck days. Yeah, Nazis bad. <laughs> I, I I do I do I do I, I do love when uh, I've seen this before when you point out that they're uh, you know it's Nazis you, these guys I, I don't know if it's the same exact ones here but usually the people who espouse this go <laughs> you're so dumb that was World War Two I'm talking about World War One <laughs> <laughs> have you seen that, that I see it all World the time again? <laughs> the Kaiser who is the Kaiser again? <laughs> Oh, okay. Sorry. Can I quickly say this? If no one else knows this, have you seen the double down or sorry, the, I would say the 180 reverse that Steven Crowder and everyone on the right is doing right now to try and distance themselves. And they have to actually do segments that says Hitler bad, Nazis bad. Like they have banners. They, they have paid graphic artists to really? design graphics that say Hitler bad that appear animated on their screens. That's so far gone. They Did are. you see like, the they, response? They actually have to do that. His yeah, audience and, and was audience. pushing back. <laughs> If you yeah, know, <laughs> if like you see the audience they cultivated and they're shocked by it. Yeah. yeah. Thank you. Like, yeah. Crowder's own audience was like, whoa, bro, bro. Hitler bad. Wait, what are we doing? I don't know about that. <laughs> yeah. Like, uh, mm, yeah, don't know I don't agree. This, man. Come on. Spicy takes. <laughs> yeah. I have a video coming out about this tomorrow where basically both Marjorie Taylor Greene and Steven Crowder are facing blowback from their audiences because – now, Marjorie Greene, since there's a lot of pressure, she had to unequivocally denounce Nick Fuentes after months. You know, she legitimized him and whatnot. Okay. Hold on, Mike. Do you know why? It's because they wouldn't give her an audience with Ye. That's why. Oh, really? She, she felt, yeah, she felt betrayed by them. So she straight up started dialing Milo and dialing Nick Fuentes and was like, yo, I hear you're with Ye. Like, can I please meet him? I want to do some stuff, blah, blah. And they were like, nah. And then shortly oh. thereafter, she like did this whole release where she was like, uh, I denounce Nick Fuentes. He's a neo-Nazi. How does no one know this? You know, all that kind of shit. It's like, how did you not know this? Would you collaborated <laughs> with him multiple times and give like speaking events with him? He's always been a neo-Nazi. This is not a secret. Like, what the fuck? <laughs> but now all the Groypers and the Nick Fuentes people have turned on her. And Nick Fuentes yeah. is instructing all of his minions to call her Large Marge and heckle her now. Oh, my God. Um, and this is like this is the bed that you've made. Uh, these are the people yep. who you aligned with. So no more shocked Pikachu faces when they say, uh, actually, I don't know about that. When you literally have to say Hitler bad, like Steven Crowder tweeted the picture of himself and he's like, I'm sure this is a message that we can all agree with. And if you look at his audience, they don't really agree with that. They thought that you were one of them. Like if you are shocked that um, or, or I should say it this way, like um, if you realize that Nazis don't think that you're one of them then you should probably reevaluate what you're doing because you're attracting these people. And, and if you can't even say Hitler bad without getting pushback, you fucked up. You've cultivated a Nazi audience. And I like that they're yeah. realizing this as if that wasn't obvious from the beginning. 
She is a Nazi. Like, what are we do? What are we, what are we talking about, bro? Like, a neo Nazi denouncing a neo Nazi. She's a Nazi. She's a fucking Nazi. Like, again, we're, we're making is that thing again. We're we're reacting like we need people to confess. She's true. a fucking Nazi. That's like, true. Okay, okay, but they've, they've collaborated before because they're both fucking Nazis. <laughs> but in, in this case, we have an actual example of someone who learned that the Holocaust was bad by going to a Holocaust museum. Right, and, and that's yeah. that's pretty bad. She gave a press conference outside of the Holocaust Museum to be like, y'all, I just learned the Holocaust was bad. And I was like, God damn. No, that's what it took. All right. Great work. Fucking gold star. A plus. Well done. You passed the assignment. It was Like, bad. she learned about it for the first time in her 50s. Yeah. And I, I, how, how are these people in Congress? I mean, it's America, but still, how? Wait. Hey again i don't be i don't be tapped i you know it, it, i i don't know how i'm like i'm on y'all side of twitter and somehow i'd be missing it she did what what about what about holocaust what about Marjorie? Oh, what did know i about miss this. okay no. so oh. she was in a lot of hot water because she's deeply deeply oh sorry, oh, sorry. Oh, I'm here lance, okay. okay hold on i got this i'll take over for lance unless his okay, mic take over you oh wait your mic oh okay he muted himself okay so essentially like a year or two ago marjorie taylor green was spouting off all this shit just oh my god Nazis XYZ, the Holocaust isn't real, blah, blah, blah. And then the Holocaust Museum invites her, I believe the one in Washington, D.C., I think, invites her to go there and and have a private tour, essentially, and go through everything. She goes through it, has a press conference outside afterwards where she goes, oh, my God, I just realized that the Holocaust w had bad things that happened in it. Like, it, it was it was that bad. She couldn't yeah. figure it out. And she said like the same thing multiple times. I don't know exactly what she said, but it was COVID related where she was claiming that like wearing masks, the house floor mask mandate was comparable to the, the gold star that yes. uh, Hitler made the Jewish people wear. And she like she said that and then she doubled down and then tripled down. And even after she apologized, after she went to the Holocaust mu Museum, she said it again. And, and like she just, she won't stop. Because she'd be fucking was... lying, bro. She'd be... <laughs> well, yeah. No, that ass. She'd be, she, she's just li like, again, they be lying. She fucking, you, if you don't know about shit, you literally don't comment on shit. Like, mm -hmm. I don't talk about foreign affairs because I'm not a foreign affairs knowing ass bitch. I don't have nothing to say. I don't deny the events. I don't affirm the events. I don't have shit to say about it. Let me tell you how, how shit goes when you don't know anything about anything. The Bahamas, right, is a constitutionally Christian nation. There are no Jewish, no, no Jewish Bahamians. There ain't no Jewish people in the Bahamas. The only time I've ever heard Jewish people even discussed at all my entire life growing up in the Bahamas was in the Old Testament and religion class. Because religion is a class. Everybody's going to take it. Constitution, Christian. Oh, I don't know any Jewish people. My first day in America, I moved to Boca Raton. Right? Lots of Boca. South Florida. Lots of, lots of Jewish people at the time. So nothing, but no, nothing about them. First day of class, there was like a Jewish holiday coming up, and my teacher was like, "Oh, is anybody in the class Jewish? They need to is gonna be observing that holiday." And I remember when he said that, my instant reaction, like I chuckled, like, "Yeah, Jewish people, like, like, like fairies, like things that didn't exist, like." And immediately the whole class was like, "Pop, pop, 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 pop," and you know what happened? I was like, oh, Jewish people exist. And that was the end. No, no more, no like Bible full of like bullshit to say, no conspiracies, no denouncements, no, no, no low theories, because that's what it's like when you don't know some shit. She fucking knows exactly what bullshit to say. She made an executive decision to go piss them the fuck off. <laughs> like, I'm gonna deny the whole shit. She knows that's a fucking problem. She knows exactly what she's talking about. That's why she goes with denial. She's fucking with y'all. Like, she's fucking. I don't know. I, 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 I gotta disagree. Like, a, a, a shit ton of people, shit ton of people talk about things they don't know anything about. Like, it happens all the fucking time. Yeah, but I... Taylor Green is so goddamn stupid. It, 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 it doesn't surprise me at all that she wouldn't know it. That doesn't mean that th this absolves her all of a sudden, that she's all of a sudden a good person. It, it just it just means that I think she's dumb. Like, I don't think she do, I don't think do she we, did do, know. I don't she think she's that, don't get me wrong. that she educated. Dumb. I'll never. I'll never take that from her. She's dumb. I'm not. I, no, <laughs> like, don't that steal is, my truth. Like, listen, I would never take that woman's truth away from her. That's a dumb bitch for sure. <laughs> but <laughs> what I'm saying is, as far as just the 
baseline. It's not like she became like it's not like oh the issue is that she was not you know a Holocaust savant or a Jewish savant, and then she you know a lot of information had to be corrected. To. It's just a base level like I'm gonna denounce this, right? I'm gonna say it didn't happen. You don't really got you don't have to go. You don't have to have a personal tour. Like you don't have that doesn't have to happen to know like no. I actually. Actually, this this probably happened, right? Like, see you know what I'm saying? Like, she would have come across the information before enough, if enough to know to say it doesn't exist. You have to come across the information that it does exist. The bitch had to know that much. She had to. Like, had <laughs> yeah, yeah, that's fair. That's fair. Yeah, that's my. Argument. I also I also gotta add. She was one of the people who said that we should have statues of Hitler because we don't have statues of Hitler. How won't we learn about history? And that's like that's weird, you know. Like, th- how many statues would you need in your town to be able to teach you everything? Would the whole town just be statues? So by the time you get to school, you're like, oh, I've, I've learned about which things are bad. <laughs> <laughs> and did we talk about the Jewish space lasers basically being responsible yes. for the California wild? No, no, being responsible right. for the California wildfires. Yeah, don't forget she it. She thought the California wildfires were caused by Jewish space lasers. This is QAnon. Well, she's a QAnoner, so obviously QAnon level anti-Semitism, like conspiracy theories, like you know, of the highest order. My my thing about what always to me is like, at the end of the day, like it's. I believe as dumb as they are, there to me is obviously strategy and planning and things that go into this, right? Because it's not a coincidence. Like in Germany, you can't be in a Holocaust denier is a problem, right? In the same way, they don't allow for statues and monuments and things like that celebrating. So it's not, it's not to me a coincidence. The specific things they choose, like we said, we already know they have a politics of plausible deniability. So it's not a coincidence to me. They choose the exact fucking fundamental things that have already been singled out as a historical problem and doing and what is the worst level of not acceptable for people that know about this lived historical reality. They choose to go do that and be like, I don't know, I don't know, I don't know. But conveniently, specifically, though, I'm going to deny the event. (laughs) I know they made that a law, and I would like some statues. Like, they know. That's my, that's my take. <laughs> All right, so here's here's more of a question, not necessarily around a topic, but um, more, I guess, maybe of our opinions. So. Uh, Andy says, I'm from the Midwest and I often come across people who aren't into politics at all, but they still have opinions about the left that are obvious right wing propaganda. How do I address that without being too harsh? Mm. In question, what do we think? I get this a lot uh, from my own family. Um, They know that I have like a political podcast and I talk about it all the time. And so I get like their uneducated political opinions and you can tell it's all telephone politics where they'll hear somebody who saw something through a Facebook meme. And that's I see. I never know how to actually address this. I'll usually shoot it down, but try to be polite so I don't because dis- if they're not in inf- like the, if they're not really informed, I don't want to be aggressive because I want them to be receptive to what I'm saying. So usually I say, um, that doesn't sound right. And then I'll move on to like something else. But I don't think that that's the correct way. Um, I think that there's, there's gotta be a, be a way to like open the door to a broader conversation. But like, how do you have that when you're trying to walk that fine line by getting them interested, but also telling them that they're wrong, you know, cause that's kind of like a turnoff to politics. Ole, you want to go? I also have strong opinions on this topic. You want to go for? It's up to you. Go, go nuts, go nuts. All right. Um, I think you 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 frame it never as an indictment, and you start it as from a certain level of your own, like you yourself came from that same position as them, mm-hmm. and you go into it with the understanding that there is nothing that you are going to say that you can say that will make this person like completely drop their worldview in this one conversation. Like you have to tr- approach everything. Like you're just here to impart nuggets of information as you can. And mm-hmm. this will be a process. And hopefully eventually people move along and not get yourself too invested in the conversation. But I know for me, like when I approach abolition, when I do things in interviews, I, I tend to start from when I talk to my family, when I have my friends with, from the place of letting you know, this sounded wild to me at first too, or I didn't know this, or I was educated in this way. So I had perceived mm-hmm. it that way. It immediately takes people off to the defensive. Like you don't, you're not, 
you know, lording yourself. Because that's really what makes people defensive is, is thinking you think I'm wrong. You think you're yeah. smarter than me. You think you know. So the minute you 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 kind of, you know, disarm it, like actually no, and it becomes a kind of a, a information gathering process. You know what I mean? They feel like they're in a discussion and not really a debate. Like that to me is what um, makes a lot of uh, like leeway in the long run. Mm, great point. Um, the thing that uh, I hear the most often and that usually pisses me off in terms of like this is not real is I hear a lot of right wingers drop either in my emails or my chats and stuff say, why does the left hate white people? And I honestly I mm. feel like liberals broke uh, a whole bunch of conservative brains maybe like five or six years ago. I don't know when white fragility came out whenever that book came out and it was doing the rounds and it was on like Jimmy Fallon and Jimmy Fallon was like, oh, I'm, I'm white. What? I, I think like right wingers saw that shit and they're like, oh, God. And that's where a lot of this weird ass they've taken. Wait, all what, did, what did Jimmy Fallon do? I missed this. Like when, when that book was going around, it was doing the rounds. It was on late night TV. Fucking Jimmy Kimmel did it too. He's like, what? I chew him white? Like all of them like, oh my God, I, I'm now acknowledging this for the first time. <laughs> Anyways, it was clown shoe shit. Uh, I, I think that really affects a lot of people. It couldn't be further from the truth. There, there's no such thing as leftist hating white people. That's just weird straw man where it's just like uh, critical race theory teaches you that like white babies are racist and time is uh, racist and white people are inherently racist. All that shit is nonsense. What, what I keep telling you is like it has nothing to do with that what we're trying to do is when i want to talk about these topics i reduce it to very simple concepts you've heard like uh you know that woke crt is coming after you marxist theory neo-marxist postmodern neo-marxism blah 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 all that kind of stuff all I think that I'm trying to advocate for, if you reduce it to a simple thing, is freedom. Like, you like freedom in your day? Well, where do you spend eight hours of your day every day? In your workplace? Do you have freedom in your workplace? You don't because you have a tyrannical system where a boss controls everything. I want to expand that. I want to give you more, like, voting power, democracy in your workplace where you spend eight hours a day. Hey, did you know that coincides with a lot of other things? Economically, this intersects with things that don't even really exist in the real world. Racial theory. But you know what? Races aren't real. We made them up. Human beings made them up, but they inter intersect because of capitalism, the history of slavery, all this kind of stuff. As this shit all interconnects, you can finally start to realize that, hey, we can liberate everyone if we start to expand. Like, go from there. Don't start on the other end in their playing field where everything is fucked up and they're like, so you hate white people. No, actually, I'm advocating for a lot of poor ass white people. You know who hates white people? Tucker Carlson. He says mm -hmm. and talks like a white supremacist, but he only likes rich white people. He hates poor white people. They all do. Doesn't matter who they are. Every single one of them hates poor white people. The whole system is rigged that way. They'll advocate for it. They'll talk about it. They'll be like, oh, yes, we have to talk about replacing that. And he can be a white supremacist. He can hold up white supremacy. But at the end of the day, there's still a lot of fucked up shit that affect white people. And I always get that thrown at me. They're always like, the left hates white people, all that shit. I'm like, no, that's not true. <laughs> I think what you're picking up on is exactly why I think it's a mistake for the left to play our advocacy towards the emotions of white people. Like, the way that we do it, I think this is a a major limitation I've written about this is, oh, I'm gonna, I'm gonna appeal to your sympathy. Like this idea that this current world, even how we frame white privilege, right? This current world, the argument we essentially make is uh, white privilege allows you to benefit. You are benefited by the society that we live in, but I want you out of the goodness of your heart, out of alliance to me, I want you to advocate to a world that is against your maybe better interest, but will be more equitable. And the reality of who people really are is there's a limit to which people, to how much people will ever be for your team if it doesn't serve, if they believe it doesn't serve them, which is why it's a better, I think, approach to frame things from if we actually had an actual conversation around class solidarity and what is a lived reality and economics and things like that, we could actually show people, no, the argument should be this current world is not good for any of fucking us. That's why I always say, mm -hmm. like, when people say they respond with like, oh, police kill white people too. Like, yeah, that's actually a good point. This is actually not a racial problem. This is not a black problem. This is a collective problem with policing. And so we should be having conversations and framing it from that way in this class solidarity way. Like, oh, actually, no, 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 no. This current world, it's not that you were inherently, you are being privileged by white privilege. No, actually, poor white people, this white identity that has been crafted, which is a craft, is actually harming you a lot, actually. You are not doing well. This is not working for you. And that's actually where your actual issue lies. And if you align with us, we could advocate for things that are actually in your better in in your best interest. Because I think about that very often. When I see a lot of a lot of the white people, a lot of the bigots that be so very angry at the things you advocate for, I'm like, you're better served than me, sweetie. I'm doing better than you. You know what I mean? Class wise and life things like this, like. These things would better serve your interests, but you're so galvanized around what you've been fed as a white identity politic, you can't see that. So I think you're picking up, up on something excellent and how we should frame from that well, class. Mm. Well, there, anyway. 
you know, you know, the first thing that's ever in real time in my experience, like actually flipped 180, like a Republican's view on this is he was like, I'm always told about this white privilege shit. And he's like, I've been poor my entire life. I don't feel any kind of privilege. And I was like, I agreed. So you can be oppressed if you're a white person by poverty, by class that that they don't ever mention that part. The way they shouldn't frame it is that like you have a special superpower because you're white. The way they should frame it is that if you and your friends are on shrooms, if the cops come knocking, if you're the white person in the group, you should go talk to the police and you should be the one that gets everyone off kind of thing. As in, you should understand it from that perspective. Not that you should walk around every day like you have a superpower. Not that you should feel that you were born into privilege just by virtue of being white, right? And I think that's usually why it's, it, it's taught incorrectly, at least in my experience. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I think you all gave great answers. I mean, I got nothing to add there. In terms of like, uh, I agree with completely with, uh, I mean, all of you, but... Uh, uh, Oleami on on how you are you, you put yourself in, in that person's shoes and you try to see from their perspective to then you know talk about these topics I think that's the best like in terms of one-on-one -on -one conversations I think that that's the best way to approach it in terms of speaking to like an audience on YouTube obviously it's a little different on, depending on who your audience is mm -hmm. who the video is for like when, when I cover a video like say a clip from the view for example when Me when Megan McCain was on she would say something stupid uh, I, I would realize that a lot of viewers that don't typically watch political videos may come across that because they watch, you know, clips of the view or something. So I would, you know, angle the the commentary towards that because the 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 whole purpose for me, anyways, is to bring new people into the conversation and 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 be able to educate those people and want them to continue um, learning. So it, it's all about the audience who you're talking to, and that uh, I think um, helps to define the framing around those discussions. Mm -hmm. Absolutely, Blair. Yeah. <laughs> You're the okay. organizer, Blair. Yeah, Blair's a fifth grade Sorry, sorry, sorry. <laughs> I'm, trying to, I'm trying to sift through comments. There's some of the stuff that it, there's just like a lot of uh, kind of like shortened phrases in there that I'm essentially just researching and really quickly clarifying what it is. I'll go with this easy one. Um, so this comes from NorCal Aggressive Progressive, who says, "Can will slash can slash please the leftist mafia be the answer to the Daily Wire. We need to start punching versus blocking. Mm. All right, I'll we don't take have this that one. funding, but um, <laughs> yeah, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, that's exactly what I was saying. It's <laughs> runtime. I don't think it's on the outside of the internet. I don't even know what the fuck the Daily Wire is. Like Dr. Ben Ruppel, Ben Shapiro's, ben Shapiro's, ben Shapiro's whole thing with Candace it's, Owens, it's, and they got the you know, everybody on that crap. It's, it's uh, come on, the Irish Sauron. Matt Wall. Wow, like there's the, the, let me tell you, talking to y'all these last two episodes is really showing me that like the freedom in being black I was in. I'm like, woo! <laughs> like, <laughs> I, I just, I'm, no, I'm pulling like, you in. We are, I, you. <laughs> like, I just simply do not know enough people that give a fuck about it. I'm telling you, like, I'd be so slow to finding out who these people are. Like, Ben, I've, I've honestly never even heard Ben Shapiro's voice. Really? Yeah, Don't you, look you, it up. Yeah, Matt Binder's the only person who can, who can impersonate without being racist. Only Matt Binder can do it. He's oh, the only one I don't know if I He's could. I don't know if I could do the Ben Shapiro voice. Actually, I don't know. That's a. That's a mile a minute voice. I wanted, to, I wanted to say this. This actually reminded me. I had to tell you all this because I thought this was hilarious. Well, I didn't think it was hilarious, but y'all are gonna laugh. Uh, of the, you know, I mostly see nothing but positive commentary from from this or whatever, but there were there are always gonna be a couple of people that tell me to shut my black ass up and I'm too damn loud. Anyway, one of those comments on YouTube and I had like eight likes was like, she is just like the fucking female Ben Shapiro. She's I was like <gasps> What? Yo, of all the slanders I've ever been slandered. <laughs> Wait, hold on. You gotta someone who 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 is running a sh the stream that can play uh play the uh, uh Ben Shapiro clip really quick. I re can you oh, go okay. ahead, can you do it? But what's which, which Ben Shapiro clip? Just any. Just grab any. Just him talking. That's all we need to hear. God. Do the the Megan the Stallion review that he oh, did. That's oh, that's a God. Okay, okay. Ben Shapiro wap. It's a it's a Wait, good how one. Do you not know about this only me. You, I you haven't the, heard no, this I, no, no, no. I did drag him for this. I've seen the okay, text, okay. but I don't okay, think you've seen that. Okay. Oh, okay. No, but I want to hear it. No, I never heard it. I only seen the text. Your world is going to change forever oh for the worse, Ole. I can't believe we're get, we get to witness this. I can't see it. How will this work? Can y'all hear it? Uh, I can't nope. hear it. Y'all can hear it? I can't, I can't hear, hear it. it. Oh. But we could see your reaction oh. to it. 
Yeah, which is all that matters. See your next one. That's good. Come on. Okay. Let me let me you do it. Because <laughs> this is your first foray into Ben Shapiro. I got this. Ben Shapiro WAP. I'm yeah, gonna text put the volume all the way up and put your phone right right next to your mic. Yeah. Oh, there you go. Oh, that's better. Yeah. Okay. Get him to actually like. Oh like Lord. Okay. So over the last week or so, there's been a lot of attention oh, yeah. paid to a music <laughs> video. It's called <laughs> Wap. I'll get into it in, in just one second. And it seems to me that there's a segment that we've been remiss in ignoring for a long time now on the show. We used to do it much more regularly. It's called Deconstructing the Culture. So it's time once again to deconstruct the culture where we take an important piece of popular culture and we and we break it down for its important aspect in American life. So let's deconstruct a little bit of culture. So there's this video that went out. It is by a person named Cardi B, who has a rather checkered past. I mean, she, she's talked on video about how she used to drug men and steal their money after after bringing them back as, as what, a quasi-prostitute? Something like that. Uh, and then she became a rapper. <laughs> no, a success story. And there's another rapper whose name is Megan Thee Stallion. I assume this is her given name. Their last name is Stallion, and her parents' name is Megan Thee. Um, and I don't know why her middle name is the as opposed to the. I know he fucking lied. Wait till he reads the lyrics for you. There's this yeah, video. You yeah, should have best. a YouTube channel where you just react, just react to Ben Shapiro videos. I'm telling you, you would make a lot of money. Yes. <laughs> the headline I would watch all those videos. Was, My Cardi B and Megan Thee Stallion's empowering anthem, WAP, is so important. It's very <laughs> important, guys. Is why he keeps saying that like that? Important anthem. I think he has a crush on Megan the Stallion. Yeah, they put out a, 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 like people who do the Grammy Awards. They put out a headline: Cardi B and Megan the Stallion deliver. He a talks like he's sped up, like when? like, like, like two times speed, right? That's, that's the thing. That's the thing. He's one two five. Okay, put out a headline. The back. The, Let me the, read these lyrics. American art that we should all. Let me oh, hear it. Great. Okay, and then there's. It's in watching the videos that apparently I'm spouting water. Um. <laughs> It's, um, yeah, so this is all great. And then there's some triggers, and this is apparently the tackiest mansion that has ever been. Now you hating on the mansion. And there, there's them lying there with a bunch of snakes. You know, kind of typical music video kind of stuff, but it's very empowering. It's going deeply empowering. So, Let me hear him start hating. There's some orders in this house. Right. In this house. Get, get to the lyrics. You gotta get to the lyrics. Okay. Hold up. I said certified freak seven days a week. Ask <laughs> Make that pull-out game weak. Yeah, you effing with some wet-ass P-word. P-word is female genitalia. Bring a fucking N-A mother for this wet-ass P-word. Give me everything you got for this so wet-ass P-word. So get to relive this? Beat it up, N-word. Catch a charge. Extra large and extra hard. Put this P-word right in your face. Swipe he doesn't have to do this. He doesn't have to do this. Spit in my mouth. This P-word is wet. Come take a dive. It continues. Uh, along, <laughs> uh, and it gets significantly, significantly more vulgar, like a, a lot more vulgar. But he gonna read it to us. <laughs> Ask for a call while you ride that D word. You really ain't never gonna f him for a thing. He already made his mind up before he came. And now get your boots and your coat for this wet ass p word. Pay my tuition just to kiss me on this wet ass p. Right. So this is deep, guys. This, this is what I'm gonna watch for. This is what the feminist movement was all about. Fuck yeah, it was. It's not really about women being treated as independent, full, rounded human beings. It's about wet ass pure. So say anything differently, it's because they're misogynist. This man ain't never had no pussy in his life, you know. That's crazy. <laughs> really, really. We have more lore after you watch this, Ole. Oh, yeah. Hold on, I gotta hear what he's saying about it. So, fortunately, I know a doctor. <laughs> for her medical diagnosis and she looked at the lyrics herself and after being kind of appalled by them obviously she had a few sort of indicators here on how she could diagnose the, the vaginal condition that apparently these women are suffering from so they're <laughs> not his wife involved <laughs> and a pop. Of course, i've heard of this ask p word was a description of the p word or whether one of the clinical symptoms here was also diarrhea no but, <laughs> It in a mop. So this suggests that there's an awful lot of um. Not to Why would he tell us his wife pussy dry, dry unprovoked? Exactly. <laughs> how did you miss this entire? How did you miss this entire comment? Like the, everything. Yeah, how did you miss this? This was I huge know. for like 
weeks. It, 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 We're going to have a so weekly so Ole reacts to Ben Shapiro so. segment. <laughs> yeah. That's a great segment, actually. It's not. Oh, I know you fucking lying. First of all, you know what? First of all, I'm going to sift through and find the comment again that said I was him. And that person, I'm going to rent a space in Times Square and you could come fucking fight me. Beat my ass. Come fight me. Come fight me. Cause... <laughs> like that's so like just oh. if you hate me say that like that's okay but you don't have to <laughs> at least they didn't call you a dollar store matt walsh ole that's what they called me bro they <laughs> call me a female monster what is what is like what is, what is, what is, what is like first Certified of all, freak, ten first a week. Of all yeah I, <laughs> the dab that's so crazy for you to compare me to him because he gets no hoes <laughs> like, <and that's, laughs> No, honey, I can assure you it's supposed to be dry, okay? Everything is fine. <laughs> they have a medical condition. That's what's going on, okay? You should be worded out if I were to get wet. <laughs> this yeah. is, he only he knows purely friction. <laughs> <laughs> My man said, what? 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 It's not how I know. That's not what I know of sex. <laughs> I mean, I personally enjoy him going like, uh, all right, uh, listeners, I'm about to get really vulgar here. I'm sorry. Excuse me. P word, D word, A word. <laughs> P word. <laughs> D word, P word. Okay. How many Dave Rubin clips are out there that Ole hasn't seen that we can have don't even you react to? I don't even know. That name sounds yeah. vaguely familiar. Oh, my but God. I don't... There's no, year, the, we the, years the thing is, there's that no night Dave night. Rubin clip. There's no Dave Rubin clip that outdoes that. Like I feel like that's true. <laughs> no, no, yeah. no, no. The wet ass P waiter. Like that one is one. Like that's its own thing. It's got remixes. There's a whole bunch of songs. Like, yeah. Honestly, some of them they're pretty good. They they timed it up well. Like mm-hmm. holding slaps. Yeah, it's not bad. Yeah, no, I don't know Dave Rubin. I, I don't. Know I, I don't be knowing these people. Mm-mm. I, I'm 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 jealous of you. I know. <laughs> mentally, you're so like, much healthier than us. <laughs> yeah, you, you, you mentally, you must be so just well off compared to the rest of us. Here. <laughs> I, yeah. I literally like I truly yo when I say to you I do not consume anything like beyond what's gonna annoy me because I'm a hot tempered person. It's like I remember my friend, um, he's a lawyer too, and we were talking about how we deal with motions, and I was like, I got like a reply. The prosecutor replied to my motion, and there I'm like. The court reached out to me like, oh, do you need time to reply to that? I'm like, no. I said what the fuck I said. I'm not going to read this bullshit. I'm not, I'm not going to consume this. You're not doing shit but replying to what the fuck I had to say. I'm not. And my friend was like, you don't reply? And I'm like, no. I don't even, I don't even be reading them. <laughs> like, I'm not, like, like, no, actually, and that's very much on me. As soon as I get a whiff of white supremacy, I'm like, oh, no plays for me. I, I'm going <laughs> to... I'm talking shit. I'm not playing that. The fuck is this? Like, no Ben Shapiro for me. <laughs> <laughs> but it's like it's an awesome running gag. So he does all these like college campus debates, and like recently he was doing a college campus debate, and in the middle of it, some like dude who's responding to him didn't even answer what he was talking about. He's like, "Well, you know, you can't even pleasure your wife's pussy. What's up?" And like immediately, I was like, "Oh goddamn, that's mm. cold blooded." <laughs> like it's yeah. it's an actual meme now. <laughs> yeah. I have it memorized. It's you sound like a bozo, bro, and you get no yeah, pussy, you and you can't even, too. and you can't even make your wife wet. So what's good, bro? Just <laughs> mm, so good. Thank you, thank you. That was, I was that not close. Great. Oh man, that was so. Epic. I have it memorized. That clip lives in my head rent free. Oh, all the time. <laughs> that is great. I do love that. Yeah, there, there's this whole world out there that is so dark and and, and evil that you are lucky to not know about like you probably haven't heard many MAGA raps I shared one on our Twitter group uh there's Tom McDonald that's like a whole rabbit hole that we we shouldn't go down right now but there's so much out there um and watching it will literally destroy your brain (laughs) I know nothing about any of that yeah you're right yeah Mm -hmm. it's out of the internet yeah I watch like Rory and Maul's podcast that's what I I do I like (laughs) 
chilling over here <laughs> kicking it. <laughs> Blair. Yes, I, I got <laughs> one. Um, all right. So I'm sorry for the pivot because we're going from something really funny to something pretty serious as per usual, I guess. Um, so we talked about this earlier in our group Twitter chat. So Lance, I'm putting you on the spot. Let's talk about uh, the four indigenous women that have been slain by an alleged serial killer in Canada. <laughs> this is hell of a wedding but the cops well, there's, yeah, want- there's, there's nothing fun about this story. No. Um, you know what? I, sh- I should have segued this story back when Oliemi and uh, Mike were talking about uh, just like the value of human worth because that mm-hmm. this this really plays into that. Uh, if anyone watching or listening right now doesn't know, and I think this is just an opportunity to talk about this, um, Canada has a crisis, and that crisis is murdered and missing Indigenous women uh, to the tune of like thousands and thousands of women. So many like sex workers who are Indigenous have died on the highway in Canada. It's known as the Highway of Tears, uh, and serial killers just have a field day with this shit. And most recently, uh, four Indigenous women were just charged. Uh, sorry, one white supremacist serial killer was charged with murdering four Indigenous women. One of the four women has not been identified, so luckily they had a naming ceremony, uh, and she's known as Buffalo Woman. But for the other three, uh, they have been identified. The person's being charged with it. But here's the fucked up part about the story: there is a basic, uh, like, I want to say, area behind where the killer was murdering them near them. There's like a, it, it's like a dump, almost like a garbage dump. They think the bodies are buried there. And the families want them to excavate the bodies, and the police have said no, because it would be too difficult. Which, to reframe this, and again, I'm not trying to do this whole, like, you just always think about what things would be like if they're reversed. But if there was a story in Canada where four women who were white were murdered by a serial killer, and their remains had still not been found, but they were believed to be in a burial site somewhere nearby, you can bet those remains would be searched for or people would go look for them. But at this point in this country, the police have straight up said nah to the point now where the daughters of the victims have come out and said they're going to do it themselves manually. So they've given they've given press conferences. They're like, we're going to grab shovels. We're going to get in there and we're going to look for the remains, which is fucked. Like, it's just it's ultimately fucked. And it's like it's the same story over and over. It's so bad in this country. There's an actual inquiry and that inquiry had like hundreds i think like 215 calls to action where it's like straight up these are the things to do to end this fucked up process but very few of them have been followed yeah wow yeah stories like that um it really makes you uh look, see how horrible things are like this kind of reminds me of the gabby petito case where a lot of people of color were bringing up how you know why are there no uh, why is there no urgency for these other cases of missing women of color? But this one about one white woman, which is still obviously very sad, you know, that one blows up. And um, yeah, it kind of it's one of those instances where white people get to see what people of color have been saying for a very long time, that there's this bias and whatnot. But yeah, that's that's a really sickening story. Um, yeah, <clears throat> it's happening right now. And it's one of those things where not a lot of people know about it either, too. Mm-hmm. You know, it's like it's making news in Canada, but it's not getting out there so to speak well and to add to what the actual you know people involved with their voices are saying <clears throat> uh cambria harris who's the daughter of morgan harris who's one of the victims she spoke with reporters in ottawa this week and she said i should not have come here and be so mad and beg and beg so that you will find and bring our loved ones home my mother didn't pass away with a home, so let's pay her the respect that she deserves by finally giving her one that's not a resting place at the Prairie Green Landfill. So their bodies are theoretically just chucked in a landfill somewhere. And just how dehumanizing and demoralizing is that? Like, honestly, think about it. That an indigenous woman's body is not worth recovering from a fucking dump. Because what, they just don't want to spend the resources? Again, like what I see mm. some of my chat saying... And what we've been saying, if those women were white, this wouldn't have happened. They, their bodies would have already oh, yeah. been taken, it, taken out and, and memorialized. Let's be totally real. It would be international news. If there was four mm. white women in Canada that got murdered by a serial killer for whatever reason, and the bodies and remains were not being excavated, but they knew where they should be, that would be international news. Like, and, and fucking America would be in an uproar. There would be so many conservative Americans be like, what about the fucking bones? Take them up. Give them peace, you know? And it's just like yet another case in Canada where no one gives a fuck. Because it's like, eh, yeah, well. Jeez. Racism. It is. Yeah. yeah. I- 
All right. So I know we're getting towards the end of kind of the two hours of this. So let me try and pose maybe less of a specific topic question. And again, something a little bit more open ended, but obviously still going to need some of our brain cells to click together to answer it. So oh, that was um, fast. Yeah. Right. <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> nice. Um, so this <laughs> I want to keep going. I have fun with all of you. I mean, I we like can go on for a little bit. I just know the East Coast folks is getting late. So I want to be. Yeah, honestly, it's fun. fun. All right. So this one uh, person did not put a name down. So from this uh, particular person's question, they say people are stuck in cycles of homelessness and or deep drug dependence. How do you deconstruct the bad faith arguments for forced assistance or getting people off the street who are dangerous to the community? To, sorry, to the community. Admittedly, some are, but much less so than people want to claim. What are short term solutions when legitimate structural solutions are not in place? Thoughts from smarter people than I. I definitely have the answers, but I'm going to let somebody else talk because I hadn't I hadn't realized how long we've been. I'm going to let somebody else talk. I, I've got a lot of talk time. Why not? If you got something to say, say it. Oh, you're muted. David, I need, I need David. I need David to talk, David. Um, affirmatively in my in my several, I don't know if you know, David, but the streets love you and they feel like you don't be talking enough. And I, I refuse. <laughs> I refuse to take some talk time from David. You got this, David. David and Matt. I'm not talking enough. <laughs> uh, honestly, I don't. I don't know if there are easy short term solutions. I mean, I feel like if there were, then we would be doing them right. Like the the answer isn't the answer just housing. That's I feel like that's the answer is housing. Yes. No. So it is. Um, like there, it's to argue for short term feels like just a way to get around what the reality needs to be. And if we're not focused on what on housing, then we're getting sidetracked is kind of my feeling on this. Mm -hmm. I had this 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 argument came this whole topic came up. Uh, on one of the election night uh, streams I was on, obviously not the one where I joined you, the one before that, where I was on the, the conservative stream over on Odyssey. Um, Sean, uh, Lance, you're familiar with this guy, Sean Fitzpatrick or Fitzgerald or something like that. Um, he, the, the issue came up and he's arguing like, obviously something's wrong when, you know, there's so many homeless people on the, well, he didn't say that actually. He kept talking about how much blight there was uh, out there. And I was like, what, what are you talking mm. about? Go, be, be a little bit, be a little bit specific. I mean, I knew what he meant, but I wanted him to say it. And he's like, uh, just, you know, the urban decay and blight. And I'm like, say it, say the, say who you're talking about, please. And he finally was like, homeless people. And I'm like, all right, what do you think we should do about it? And he was like, arrest them. And he was like, I was like, okay, uh, we arrest them. They go to prison, they go to jail. They spend however long there or whatever they get released. Where do they go back on the street? What, what do we do then? Arrest them. Okay, so you want them to just being constantly arrested, put back out there, this never-ending cycle, which doesn't solve anything. And he was like, "Well, what do you what do you think we should do?" And I was like, "Housing is an obvious choice." And he's like, "No, no, 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 no." So the you know the the solution from conservatives is just to literally just keep r r arresting people, and then uh, they go back out on the street and arrest them some more. Um, that's not an answer because it doesn't solve anything. Literally, we have to provide people with housing. It, it is. Yeah. That simple. And obviously from there, if certain individuals need, you know, mental health, that's something that should be provided as well. Um, if people are uh, violent or and a threat to others and themselves, then you can go through the law system to to have them, you know, uh, you know, uh, even if they don't want to go, they need they need help. But otherwise, you can't force people to go if they're not posing a threat to anybody at all, just because they're a blight, because they're sitting outside. No, you can't force people to do that. At, at the end of the day, this goes back to the original um, point we made earlier about them just actually all of these these hatreds or these issues that they come up really just boil down to a fundamental hatred and vilification of the of the people of the group that's what it really is about because they understand what it means to address root causes in any other circumstances if their family has a drug problem they do not want their family arrested or forcibly restrained or these kinds of things to happen they would want them to get rehab they would want them to get conditions they would want these kinds of things to happen and they recognize that in these scenarios they they intentionally frame it as though they love whenever it comes to maintaining a carceral world or continuing to abuse people we love to paint as though there's no other option and you have to do it like that because there's no other way to like justify what is obviously inhumane. But the reality is 
it's not a magical thing. There's not something that's out of out of their control. They can put money into communities, into under-resourced communities, homelessness, mental health. The reality is most Americans are living paycheck to paycheck. That's one. And two, most people have some kind of mental health issue and like depression and serious mental health issues, serious mental health issues and things that are exacerbated are by poverty and the inability to treat them and get help and get resources. There's a reason why you don't see those same level of the manifestation of our mental health issues on the streets in a rich community versus if you see it somewhere poor. It's not because those people are any more predisposed to mental illness. It's not because they themselves are more of a problem or need to be policed or handled by the state in that way. It's because they don't have the resources. So it's that simple. The same way, whenever we talk about what is policing as an institution and all the problem, their response is, is always they they understand um, pumping money into into helping something get better or some kind of root cause when it comes to let's get the police more money to training, let's give them more of this, more of this. So if you think, oh, you don't want to see homeless people, or you think these people who you've deemed other poor people, homeless people, are a problem or what have you, why wouldn't it be? Why is it out of the realm of possibility to give them money for the issues in the same way we throw money at every other problem, everything else America wants to do, we have no problem throwing money at it, but somehow we act like we need some other magical solution. Like, what else could we do other than incarcerate these people or forcibly, you know, restrain them? And yet we could have given them the fucking money in the first place to get the mental health issues and the mental health uh, resources that they need and want and often still do, but do not want to do it at a threat of criminal prosecution when they are still homeless on the street and battling those things. So and, and by the mm. way, that that saves money. Like we shouldn't have to make this yeah. argument, but it but if you care about this argument, if you care about money, if that's what you're concerned about, it saves money to house them, and then they're not relying on on the system. They're not relying on the emergency room. That in, in the law, there's been multi, like tons of studies done on this. It it's both the the most moral thing to do, the most practical thing to do, and uh, economically the smartest thing to do. And for some reason, I mean, for many reasons, I guess, but the, there's just there isn't that that will to do it in, with people that are actually in power who could implement it, and it's it's disgusting. Yeah, they think that you can essentially criminalize homelessness into oblivion or Thanos snap them out of existence. Like that's the way that they talk about homeless people is as if that's the solution. Just get them out of my sight, out of sight, out of mind. But the more cost efficient solution is to just do what's the most moral. As David said, you house them. That's it. That's the only other solution. And that's why like people can talk about mutual aid and whatnot. They can talk about helping out where you can. But the major solution, the easiest solution is housing. That's that's literally it. Like it sounds really overly simple, but it's it is. That's the solution. And and that's how it all ties together, right? Initially, like we said, there's the government is invested in making you feel like it's the government the government's just doing you a favor. The government does not have to do for you. And if you believe that underlying rationale when it comes to situations, when it comes to let's help homeless people, let's give people the resources, is the reason why people get so much vitriol about it. Because in their mind, they really think the government is doing a fucking favor rather than just doing its duties where mm -hmm. it is supposed to. The only reason you have a government is there to help and serve you and to keep you out of these kinds of problems. But because we have been trained and educated like that, because again, larger conversation about capitalism, you know yeah. what I mean? Keeping us working X, Y, Z. You have to believe, I do I help? I'm responsible solely for myself and the government is only here to help you in rare, rare, rare circumstances and anybody mm -hmm. who might need them for anything. Like, I don't know, most of the fucking country that lives check to check, ooh, welfare. Mm -hmm. Well, so I was no problem giving those checks to like corporations and stuff though. Mm -hmm. A bang, like, a bang, yeah. a bang. I was gonna say, in terms of how the, I guess the right, I guess sees homelessness, saying that like the short term solution is like they're just criminalizing it away. I actually think that's part of the long term goal because and, and I know uh, Oleyemi, you've looked into this too. One of uh, my researchers that worked for my channel, her master thesis and everything in the background was about the prison slave system. So I was really mm -hmm. grateful to have her as an invaluable research to my work as well. And when you look at companies like Unicor and stuff like that and the deals that they've made with the government and stuff like that, incarceration is invaluable because of the essentially free financial labor that comes out of it from weaponizing prisoners as modern day slaves. And it disproportionately affects black and Latino communities because that was essentially the counteracting balance to when slavery was abolished that was essentially put in place by these Southern states. This is kind of a huge thing. Homelessness. Oh yeah. I, it's, it's, this is essentially just a reworking of that. And homelessness, in particular, homeless folks who are not white, essentially, are disproportionately affected, essentially, by those who are going to be targeted by police to go to jail and stuff like that and essentially throw them back 
into this legal slavery system. And it's really fucked. I think to a degree, because capitalism, you need someone to be underpaid in order for companies to turn profit because no one wants to pay workers fairly. So how do they fix that? Well, with prison labor. And how do you get prisoners? By making laws that are unsustainable. And what's one of the ways to do that? Criminalize homelessness instead of solving the real problem. I think this is a huge issue. Mm-hmm. Yep. My last alert now. Yes, I to see you, you in your bag. That's my, that's what I said. Mm-hmm. Oh, yeah. That's- He's spinning. But but David Dole, we don't do that in Canada, so we can do a weird high five from bottom to top. Oh wait, yes, we absolutely. Can. Oh yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Just, actually, sorry. There's a, we, we do it disproportionately to Indigenous people, so we got that. <laughs> there's a uh, a great. So I listened to an episode of of, of Canada Land. It's a Canadian podcast, and they did one on on food banks and how Canada is unique in the sense in how we treat food. We don't have food stamps here, and we're the only country in the G7 that doesn't have food stamps or any mm. version of food stamps. And we use food. We almost celebrate food banks. And they made the comparison to the U.S. Like you don't see Joe Biden or anybody going to food banks and being like, and you know, at the holidays and and celebrating food banks. Does. Whereas our politicians do that as if it's like. As if you're not in power and should be doing something else to feed yeah, these people. Yeah, like providing food. <laughs> yeah, like provi- exactly, providing food. Doing something that to, to ensure people are able to live proper lives and don't have to rely on food banks. And actually, so food banks only came in in the 80s and was brought in as a temporary measure and eventually became normalized to the point where now we rely on them and our culture celebrates food banks and, and giving food away to the point where you, you're in a grocery store now. You say like, uh, Walmart does this. You buy food at Walmart, and the, and then at the checkout, they have like a basket to put your food in, the food that you just bought. So Walmart is both making the profit and at the same time taking the food that you bought for them so that they can say, hey, we gave this food to the homeless. Like it's the, the system is so messed up and we just accept it. And it takes like people to point, it, how, point out how ridiculous it is for people to wake up and realize that this entire system is completely absurd and to have politicians especially celebrating it as opposed to using their power to do something about it. I mean, it's it's so backwards. Wow. Yeah, my family, when, when uh, my dad was disabled, he had his own business. And right when it was really like starting to to pick up, he got disabled. So my family was on food stamps and that just wasn't enough. So we had to do food stamps and food banks towards the end of the month when you kind of like run low on resources and whatnot. And, and you know, you your food stamp card isn't uh, secured. Um, but yeah, food stamps alone, just like with my own experience, is not sustainable. Like when you use that with food stamps then you can you can essentially get by uh, and also clothing banks as well was really important for my childhood um but yeah that's i did not know that canada didn't have food stamps that's that's interesting that's sad but interesting next question <laughs> well, i was going to say uh, do y'all want another question or do you want to wrap things up how are the east coast folks doing mm, on time good question. how are y'all feeling we could do another question can do another yeah question. i could do another one or two all right, cool. Um, okay, there's a lot about Ben Shapiro now. Um, <laughs> okay. yeah. Non-Ben Shapiro and it's relevant. Um, this is going to be about the railroad strikes. The question mm. comes from Belly Bean, and they ask, was the squad correct with their votes on the railroad strike? No. They worked with the unions. to, to like. So initially I thought it was – dumb like everybody else but then i was reading from labor reporters not just like you know random people people like uh jonah Furman, who uh is a great labor reporter he said that the the reason they voted that way is because unions worked like told them basically to the the idea was they wanted to put up this uh, uh amendment to add um sick days to the senate and to do that it has to pass in the house so the idea was for them to vote for it. Now you could argue, but then why didn't Rashida Tlaib vote with it? Mm. And I think she was, I mean, I think in terms of strategy, she was correct not to vote with it. But apparently the other members, that that's what why they voted that way. Uh, it isn't to say it was a good strategy or defense of it, just to explain why they voted that way. Yeah. Uh, have, you seen, have you seen the Shama Sawant versus Ryan Grimm debate on this? No. Because it, it, no. it got pretty down to the core at it. They knew going into this, a lot of the people, like not the union, you're totally right. Everything you just said is 100% correct. Mm-hmm. It's what they were asking the squad to do. But this was a DOA. 
and and they should have recognized it as such. There was no yeah. way that this was not going to die in the Senate. And it's one of those things like, so what are the two options? A, you don't vote for it and you hope that enough of you have a strong enough contingent to shut it down, period, because that's what you'd have to do so it doesn't even go to the Senate. Or you do it that way knowing full well that it'll die in the Senate, but at least you tried to add that five-day tack on it is the other problem. But it's weird because it's one of those things like a union, like anything else, it is fallible. It's human. And the leaders of a union exactly. could be wanting or saying things that are not directly in the interest of all the workers, at which point it's mm -hmm. up to the people within the union to be able to say we have to change our management because the union heads are not in our interest. But there's a lot of people within the union who are very upset about what happened because they thought they should have just not voted for it at all. So yeah. and from a political standpoint. It's a nightmare no matter what. If you're a progressive, if you're a squad member, it's lose-lose in both directions. It's either I do what I think is best in opposition to what the union bosses are asking for because I know it's DOA. So I say I'm not voting for this in the House so it never makes it to the Senate. At which case a lot of people will be mad because it's like, whoa, you went against what the union asked for. And in the other direction, they do what they did and everyone is still like, well, what the fuck? But it just died and they got nothing. And now it's it's over. Like, what do we yeah. do now? Yeah, th there's no winning in this situation, honestly. But yeah, I think that there is a real difference between doing what the union bosses want and doing what the union workers want. Because union yeah. bosses aren't infallible. Like, they're good. Like, listening to them isn't necessarily bad. But in this instance, it was very clear that a majority of the workers did not want this deal. So if I were in Congress, I would have rejected it. Because again, as you said, Lance, like the whole thing was DOA. Like, we all knew that this was going to fail anyway. So to just yeah. cast that vote in solidarity with workers... I think that that would have been a really good symbolic victory. That being said, though, I think that it's not necessarily like a cancelable offense of the squad. I think no. that the problem is that the squad just isn't very politically savvy and Democratic Party leadership usually runs roughshod over them. Um, and that's right. that's really the core issue. They need to get more savvy and strategic. But, um, you know, it, it's it, again, like. It was lose, lose, lose all around because it was going to die. Um, it's just a shitty situation. And, and since we're talking about this, I just want to add that Biden does have the authority to sign an executive order where he guarantees uh, sick leave by simply saying we're not going to contract with any company that doesn't offer at least seven paid sick days. Um, yep. Obama did this before. Biden can do that. And then, I mean, these rail companies, they have federal contracts. That's how you effectively do it like that. But he's not doing it. And the real test comes from... The pressure, uh, like, can we exert enough pressure? Can the squad exert enough pressure on Biden to get him to do that? And that is where I think that anyone who's disappointed, that's where you kind of encourage them to move pressure towards Biden. I know that there's a lot of labor activity that is moving towards that currently, but that yeah. really is where the pressure needs to be because that's how you accomplish this now. Yes, he failed the workers. The squad, it's a little bit ambiguous as to whether or not what they did was correct. I wouldn't have voted in the way that they did, but if they can get Biden to sign that executive order, it's a win overall. Sure. It doesn't matter. Yeah, yeah, I agree. I think there's a weird section of the internet that's obsessed with the fact that like AOC hasn't unlocked communism yet. Like, she hasn't pressed the Medicare for all button, theme, you know. Yeah, I was, I was like, what the fuck? Come on. <laughs> <laughs> like it, it's uh, it's fine to criticize you know strategy and that kind of thing but you have to understand like people have to understand how congress works they, they don't have the numbers like it's mm -hmm. it, yes i think there's fair criticisms around like how they should be using their platforms to power who they should be should be speaking you know uh power or truth to and, and you know maybe openly criticizing leadership a little more and, and that kind of thing but there's limitations on what they can accomplish right and, and yeah. people and a, a lot of it i think is manufactured because there's Obviously, a lot of incentive to try and um, and uh, capture a right wing audience by Views attacking and the left and pretend you're on the left. Like it's so fucking stupid. AOC but, did this again. <laughs> she but... failed again. It's just we know who. <laughs> yeah. Didn't force the vote. Oh god. Oh god. Yeah, that's facts. Yeah. Right. Let me wrap this up with a last question. There was another one that I saw about AOC. Um, and they were asking, I am so sorry, I cannot find their question exactly, but they were asking um, us to discuss about AOC being involved in an ethics investigation. Oh, God. Oh, see, we don't have the details to my understanding yet, but here's why I'm going to remain skeptical until we get more details. Getting a congressional ethics investigation, like you can fart and there can be an investigation of you. So let me just give you one example. Marjorie Taylor Greene, so she had Marie Newman. She was um, across from her. They had uh, opposite offices. So Marie Newman, she has a trans daughter. She put up a trans flag. Um, Marjorie Greene responded by throwing up a poster 
that was anti-trans saying they're trust the science there's only two genders yada yada so one of the gay staffers there who's a staffer from a democratic congressman he vandalized that sign by putting a sticker on it um because he didn't like seeing you know the hate speech every single day when he walked by that man is now being investigated by uh, the, the uh for for an ethics violation because marjorie taylor green claims that she felt unsafe because she didn't know if this person who vandalized that sign is going to be riding in the elevator next to her she wanted additional security so it's really easy to spark an investigation and that's not to say that you know aoc is innocent i, I mean I, i'm I think she probably is. It's probably a bullshit investigation, but we just don't know yet. So don't just think because there's an investigation that that means she did something guilty. They're always trying to find ways to burn members of the squad. Um, Ilhan Omar has been subjected to this, I believe, as well. Um, although I could be misremembering that. But just wait until there's more details because odds are this is some manufactured bullshit from the right. But if it's not and she actually did something legitimately uh, unethical, I will condemn her for this. I, you know, it's not like I, I'm going to be a cheerleader 100% of the time. It's just we've got to be nuanced. The articles I read uh, say there was a complaint filed against her from some conservative organization for accepting the ticket to the Met Gala. Yeah, so that, that's, that's what there you have it. That's what, oh, <laughs> what this is God. all about. Yeah, yeah. I was going to um, say, you know, it's that's what it seems like gentlemen? this is all about. Got him. Yeah, I yeah. mean, uh, it's not going to be whatever it is. It's not going to be something that unravels her career. It's going to be even if she like forgot to like file how much the ticket was worth or exactly how much it was worth, whatever they need to do. It's going to be some like, don't you do this next time sort of slap on the wrist thing. If, if even that, if yeah. that's what this is. Yeah. They're, they're trying to find something. So that's why always when you hear it come from the right and you see a bunch of right wingers like excited about something, Nine times out of ten, it's based off of some bullshit. So always take it with a grain of salt. That's my advice. Yeah, Blair. Before you wrap things up, can we do a uh, cancellation slash uncancellation? Oh, yeah. anyone, yeah. okay. has, has anyone thought of those? Mm. Did you bring those to the table? Who's being canceled this week? Oh, I hadn't thought does, about. Does, this. Does, does the canceled party have to be someone who would like be this like be a surprise, like someone not typically canceled, or it could be literally whoever you anyone. think. It could be anything. It could be petty. Mm. You can be as petty as uh, you want. I, I mean, it, it could I, just I think, be a small ass beef, and you're just like, I'm canceled. Fuck him. He didn't I say the, uh, he liked me. <laughs> I think the cancellation this week has got to be. Um, if there was any question about his career being completely in the garbage now, Matt Taibbi is done. He's done. Okay. It's Second. over. Second. Second. Yeah. Yeah. I approve this motion. <laughs> <laughs> Does anyone know what happened with him? So he he was he was on like the Michael Brooks show like I don't know three like four years ago. I was I and was they were I think him. they were like they were going to talk about Elon Musk too on that show. Like I saw a tweet about that. And Matt so Taibbi, to, to go from that to what he is now is so freaking crazy. I, I know the Matt, answer to that question. Matt Taibbi was friend of the Majority Report. He was in studio yeah. when I was there numerous times, hmm. uh, just shooting the shit, knocking on right wingers and billionaires and all sorts of. And then there is that clip of him, you know, knocking on uh, Elon Musk with Michael Brooks. Um, what happened to him is, uh, well, first of all, the cracks started to come in 2017 or 2018 whenever that old book of his about his time okay, working for yeah. that mm. yeah that russian uh website exile. that you exile yes mm. um there were things wrote in written in there him and mark ames um they say it's satire um and uh it, people the they, actual they also said uh, it was satire in the book by the way just so yes. just so we're clear because there there is discussion of like sex with a 15 year old right. as well as a whole bunch of fucked up shit but they said in the book this is satire just and, i and, just want to and, be transparent and, in that and women women in russia who were working with them at the time have come out uh, when that when that whole when those allegations were being made they came out and said what you're reading in the book did not actually happen to us we had good interactions with working under Mark Ames and, and Matt Taibbi. So take that for what you will. I, you know, there's, but those allegations that were leveled at him during the me too thing was the beginning that you could see him yes. starting to turn a little bit. Hmm. It's the same thing. Like when, um, you know, you said this with a few people, like all of a sudden, uh, the resistance libs with Glenn Greenwald started to get under their skin. And all of a sudden, uh, that era turned some people, who I guess were never that staunch in their staunchly felt their beliefs. 
they were easier to turn around, you know? Um, and so that sort of was the beginning of Matt Taibbi. I don't know what turned him completely, um, but that well, was PR the beginning asked him for about sure. That. It, apparently that's the moment where you can actually, you know that Simpsons moment with Ralph, where it's like, look, this is the exact moment you can see where his heart breaks. And it's like, <laughs> apparently that NPR in for you is, is that moment for Matt Taibbi, where like they asked him and it's like, they kept pressing him until he eventually started apologizing. And he was like, I, I'm very, very sorry. I, it was satire. I didn't mean to put that in the book. I'm ashamed of it, deeply ashamed. And from that moment forward, you can like track it where it's like he became more and more reactionary. Oh, I'm a little transphobic. Uh, I don't know all the questions. Mm -hmm. I don't know. Uh, trans women in women's prisons uh, are puberty blockers, actually genital mutilation. I don't know. Like it just started going from there. I mean, also, once you start doing that and you see the money coming in, that's it. You're 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 done. Like you're you're going to be in there. Like if if the money didn't matter to you, you wouldn't have done it to begin with. But yeah. once it starts pouring in, there's no coming back from it. Like Matt Taibbi and Glenn Greenwald, as long as the being a right wing reactionary brings them uh, substack cash, this is where they're going to go. Um, this I, I would love to see if there is a turnaround at some point. If like many years down the line, this is no longer a, a monetizable thing. Are they going to still be who they are? Are they going to turn around and jump no. around again? Well, you know, at least at least Greenwald, <laughs> at least Greenwald, though, this was always sort of who he was. With Taibbi, though, this was a complete 180 in mm -hmm. terms of, like, the stuff he was putting out and who he was going after. Like, with Glenn Greenwald, he just happened to align with the left on things like the NSA when, you know, Glenn Greenwald's career was made via the Snowden files and stuff. But, like, we always knew that he was, like, one of these, like, right-leaning right at the very least libertarian types. Taibbi, though, he was a guy who was out there on the ground at Zuccotti Park with the Wall Street, the Occupy Wall Street people. He was someone, you know, like I said, coming into the majority port offices, knocking on all these right wingers, sitting next to Sam Cedar. Like this was a guy who was portraying himself this way. And his his turn is certainly the one more interesting than Glenn Greenwald's. Yeah, it's sad. Mm -hmm. It's just so sad. Who we uncanceling? I was Googling and everybody that I could see was canceled. I feel like I, I stand by all those things. <laughs> <laughs> like, I, I was like, all these cancellations feel fucking earth. <laughs> like, I was like, everybody that crossed my path, I was like, valid. <laughs> like, <yeah. laughs> <laughs> Do not have disapprove. Right, I got, I got one. You had I got, such a good I, one last week. Okay, sorry. I got go one. Ahead, go ahead. I got one to uncancel now. Uh, he's a free man now, so he's in the clear. Uh, Victor Bout, the arms dealer, uncancel. <laughs> 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 that's beautiful that's hilarious I'm not tweeting that that's too spicy <laughs> yeah I won't acknowledge oh, this <laughs> after this <laughs> yeah. who, like, who knows maybe maybe he's, maybe he's a changed man maybe he's gonna come out start a twitter account and he's gonna go in this house I believe black lives matter <laughs> trans rights are human rights <laughs> Maybe he's a changed man. We don't know. <laughs> At that moment, I will tweet it. <laughs> Wait for it. <laughs> well, I feel like I, I, I need like a, a list of like who's canceled, and then I can mm -hmm. properly pick yeah. one out. But like I, who is canceled? <laughs> yeah, I'm not sure who like, I would uncancel. I'm trying to think of who's petty canceled. cancellations to be like, oh, let me get rid of those. But then I'm like, those are fair too. Like I'm like, oh, Daniel Caesar, <laughs> but I was like, he deserved that shit. He should have shut the fuck up. Then I'm like, oh, Chris Ed Michelle, that is like how black people we canceled the shit out of Chris Ed Michelle, but we and we've allowed Kanye and all kind of people to go on some MAGA stuff and Lil Wayne and all of them. But I'm like. That's what you get. You shouldn't have been talking shit. I can't help you. Like I, <laughs> I don't, I don't know who we can, who we can, uh, who's who, like. I can only think of people who I'm like evaded cancellation. Mm -hmm. Like, you know what I mean? Like, oh, and then I'm like, oh, let me don't bring that back up before I say it. And then somebody tweeted, and now it gets a new spiciness, and now I'm hated by like Nicole Richie's husband. <laughs> like, you know, like, <laughs> like, like, like he should have been canceled. <laughs> like, like, like. <laughs> 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 I don't, I don't, I don't. I uncanceled. I'm like, uh, y'all, y'all got somebody? No more people. <sighs> yeah, uh, I don't I think have anything. Look at my chat. I don't know. 
My yeah. chat's saying Ethan Klein, but I was like, I don't think Ethan oh, Klein. Oh, he's never canceled. Ethan, he's never canceled. Ethan, you know, Ethan, Ethan Klein just goes back and forth, though. He's 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 like he's basically like quantum physics. He's in one of two states at all times. <laughs> he's always canceled or uncanceled. It's just like he flips back and forth. You know, that's his reality. So I, I if I uncancel Ethan Klein by tomorrow, he he'll be canceled again, then uncanceled. I, I think it, <laughs> I, don't, going I don't even know who Ethan Klein is. That's crazy. Uh, Keep it that way. Okay. <laughs> I well, Someone's they didn't cancel. They didn't cancel him, but but they did get on his ass, and I didn't. I didn't think that was. He's one of the white people I like. Can John Mulaney? Can we? Can I absolve John Mulaney of his sins? Oh, oh for, for cheating was... on his wife? Is that what we're talking? Yeah, about? yeah. Can I absolve him? Yes, that's can petty. He cheat? I don't even know why he was really like a story. Like I don't know. That's what I'm saying. Free, Wait. free my guy. But did he? Did he cheat when she was pregnant? Is that the story? No, 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 no. So the the reason why he was canceled is because the um, Anna Marie Tendler, his first wife, I guess, um, she essentially he told her he didn't want kids like that was kind of a big thing. And she, I guess, wanted kids or something, but didn't because they were married. He goes and cheats with this other actress that I forgot her name. Olivia Munn. Is that it? Was she that one or is she a different one? Yeah, yeah, her Olivia Munn. And oh, almost completely gets pregnant mm-hmm. and has a child. Yeah. And it's essentially, as like a woman, it's kind of spitting right in her face, being like, oh, well, I wanted children, but I sacrificed this for you. And as women get older, it becomes harder for you to safely conceive a child. And so she <sighs> comes When away. you lay out the case like that, it, I don't feel, I don't feel comfortable. <laughs> 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 I'm gonna be honest and say that I I like the like like the NFL knew all the horrific facts, but uh, already and had chosen <laughs> had chosen to marry you, but I didn't think the public, meaning my co-host, knew. But now that you've laid out the facts, Blair, <laughs> <laughs> I, got, I got a good conscience. But I have a new new contender. I actually I watched the video. I'm nosy. And like TJ Holmes and old girl, um, y'all seen that with Good Morning America, the affair, the scandal, which oh, we should. Yeah. Talk about. Oh yeah. I was so hyped for that tea. Look, I can't get nothing. Um, I watched the video though, and in fairness, turns out they were both separated from their partners. Like, I watched the whole. I've been. I'm deep in their business. They're still trifling for different reasons, but technically, mm. they were both, both have been separated for months. So they didn't technically have an affair. Well, apparently, TJ be slanging dick all around. Good morning, America. So he's had some other affairs. Oh. Oh, wait, wait, what happened? Yeah. Now, now I need to know. Okay. <laughs> no. no. The Good Morning America scandal. No, well, I no, just no, no. heard I, that I they were the fired but I don't know for fucking. That. It, was, it was like, you know, a marital affair, blah, blah, blah. Someone likes being a They lost their jobs, like right? That. Just forget, just for having an yeah, affair, they lost their jobs. But they just took them yeah. off air. All right, so boom, let me tell you what's up, what happened, what happened. I didn't know these people, but now I know all their business. All right, so they, <laughs> they started Good Morning America doing this around like 2013, 2014. They have both been married to their respective partners for 12 years, specifically. Um, uh, Old girl, the girl, he cheated, the blonde woman, the, the host, um, she was married to her husband, who was, uh, I think he was in 90210, one of them white people shows. He's an actor named Andrew Shu. Mm. She'd been married to him for 12 years. They separated in August. TJ and his wife separated about, I think, four months, like four months before that. They'd been separated. But TJ was still like working things out with his wife. Um, like she thought that they were going to get back together and figure it out. They were also, she was unaware of this relationship um, he has with old girl. But apparently they started training for the marathon together. And then, <laughs> right, they started they started getting it cracking, right? <laughs> so, but apparently, TJ, TJ been trifling. So, TJ, check TJ out. TJ used to be cheating on her, apparently, three, he, uh, in, like, years ago, he was cheating with this other woman that worked at Good Morning America, who was friends with his co-host, who he's now having the affair with, and he was with that woman. A lot of energy, this man. (laughs) Stamina, I'm just gonna say. (laughs) He keeps him a white woman in the talk, anyway. So he was cheating with this woman for three years. When they finally, when they finally stops dealing with her, this woman, he gets the job, um, he gets the job offer at Good Morning America, and the quote from old girl the cold she's like oh my god i almost fell out i was so we were so excited for this we've been trying to figure out for like five or six years how we could work together <laughs> so anyway he gets in the job and she starts sleeping with him now her little friend the other woman he'd been having the affair with is upset so they kind of have a falling out wife kind of is like <laughs> what's going on what's going on but i'm 
unsure, <laughs> unsure, dreams still out. But apparently they was going on double dates. He, they was taking they. Wait, what? Yeah. Is, it, is this an 80s sitcom? What is going on? <laughs> it, 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 it's hot. <laughs> The tea is hot, okay? <laughs> they, had, they, were, they were double dating. They even they even had her daughters um babysitting TJ's kids. What? No. Yeah. <laughs> yes. yes. <gasps> yeah. Wow. Yes, child. Wow. Mm-hmm. <laughs> yes. So now, had they you know should have hit the fan now, and that's where we're at. But technically speaking, an un uncancellation like fair. Oh, so I don't. <laughs> I don't want to cancel. I don't want to uncancel TJ because I don't like these practices. I don't. I. I, I don't like this whole. I keep my black at home. What is he doing? But I'm unca- I, 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 in fairness, they were separated from their spouses. That's being left out everywhere. Mm. They were separated. Mm-hmm. Are they trifling? Absolutely. Those TJ freaks. Absolutely. <laughs> like, but. It wasn't actually in a fail. All right. Didn't uh, didn't Joe Scarborough and and Mika like also do basically the exact same thing on like Morning Joe? Like they their co-hosts, they were I'm not I can't say they were cheating. I don't know enough, but they were both married and then they became unmarried and then they're now now they are married. Who are these so, people? Like, oh. Give me the names. Joe Scarborough oh. and and Mika Brzezinski from from Morning Joe on on MSNBC. I don't know what that really? They're the two hosts there. So they, huh. yeah, it was like a big secret apparently for like a long time, but but everyone like behind the scenes knew that they were together. And then at some point it became public. Um, but it's, it, it it seems weird that these two would lose their, why? these new ones would lose their jobs over this. I'm going to tell you why. Yeah. I'm going to tell you, I'm going to tell you why. I'm going to tell you why. Because let me tell you the optics. First of all, it's far more interesting because TJ's hot. Let's start there. Like, <laughs> right? And like also white ladies love, love, love a scenario where a mid-ass woman is with like a mid-ass white ladies with a fine ass black man. That's why they love the first season of Bridgerton. It feels aspirational. Like they love, <laughs> they love that shit. So they eating that up. They love that. What? Yes, you get to crack it. So the white woman is interested for it for like, woo. And the black woman are like, I know you fucking lying. I know you don't have your black woman at home. Leah, did you see the message, like the testimonial from his anniversary? He had left his wife? Because that's what y'all, none of y'all seen that? Mm-mm. Oh, bitch. I'm looking up. Oh, I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I got that. Like, oh, I'm so excited. He's in very the, in the message, in, in the thing, he's like, he's like, oh, I mean, like the message. I'm not lying to y'all. It's basically like, woman, please. I, you know what? Let me find it. I'm, I'm, I'm sorry. I know we were saying we were like, I have to read it to y'all. You have to. Y'all got to get it. Bring us the tea. Yeah, yeah this is a whole new world that I'm unfamiliar with now. Oh, I'm so excited. There's more to learn from everybody. We yeah. love it. <laughs> I just feel like when it comes to personal life, it shouldn't impact. Like, unless you're like mm-hmm. a, a bad, like a, a terrible person. But I feel in terms of like relationships, that shouldn't impact your no. job at work yeah uh, unless yeah, it's somehow interfering i don't know maybe it's a distraction well, but it, work is, there. it is he's involving work into the sex life stuff in, in though. fairness in fairness but they work together they're, they're the in, same level right like it's, and, it's, fairness, and it's consensual no, right? it's consensual too, yeah right? but, yeah but 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 they they let it rock at first when they when they first heard, but then I think they further learned that he in fact slangs dick amongst the workplace. Like it's no, not he is not while she may only be being dicked down by him, he is in mm. fact dick downing many a bitch. Like mm. that is what is happening. They are playing out the morning did show. Did she did she know that? Is this now news to her? Is what is what I want. I, I, I think it's news to the organization that he is he is out here divvying out dick as he feels freely. Let me, let me read. Mm. Wait, did they have an exclusive <laughs> deal, though? Is it like you can't sleep with other people, but I can? Or was it like a polycule? Like, what, what was the idea? Child, I do not know, but I know TJ is <laughs> Imagine, Imagine think you have an exclusive arrangement with somebody's husband. A fool you must be. But let me let me, let me read the caption, what he, what he posted to his wife. This is a man who wanted to be the fuck out. This particular decade challenge is a little late, but 10 years ago, Marilee married me. And despite my best efforts, she remained married to me the past 10 years. That's not hyperbole. Wow. I'm not being dramatic. I gave her plenty of reasons, excuses, and opportunities to walk her fine ass out the door. But instead, (laughs) 
with with her built in, with her built in black woman superpower, she showed a grace and patience that's incomprehensible. Asking her for another ten years would be asking too much. Another ten months, that may even be a stretch. If she gave me another ten weeks, I should consider myself lucky. If she puts up with me another 10 days, I'd be grateful. But if she would even spare another 10 minutes of her time for me today, I should consider myself blessed. This is Marilee Holmes, and I, TJ Holmes, do solemnly swear that I was her decade challenge. <laughs> yeah. I don't want to cancel this. Yeah. <laughs> that is an act of romantic terrorism. <laughs> they, have, yeah. they have sent him to the fucking gulags, okay? He is a fucking <laughs> demon. Oh my god! Like, I'm, not voting, I'm not voting for this. Straight I up, I'm not voting for this. Shaken and thrown <laughs> up. Okay? You know, I vote president. Right? You I'm know, <laughs> <laughs> I want no part of this. <laughs> you know, you know, and crazy that is. That man unprovoked went on the internet and said. For 10 years, I have been begging this bitch to leave me. <laughs> please, oh, my please. God. He said his fucking stinking strong black bitch. I'm so sick of this shit. Leave me. And then he went out and signed dick to every white woman he could find. So she fucking got the message. The man <laughs> Is a blue eyed demon. Okay, is a fucking oh romantic terrorist. That being said, I'm a defense attorney. I believe that everybody is titled to an overzealous man. <laughs> and that man was not having an affair. He separated from all. <laughs> so I would like to put him back up on the auction block <laughs> for a cancellation. Okay? <laughs> my boy TJ. That's <laughs> <laughs> I vote present. <laughs> I'm not part of this. I want no part of this. I wash my hands of this. Yeah, I second that. I'm not going to wait into this bullshit. There's way more than I anticipated. <laughs> Matt? Matt, yeah. vote. Uh, oh. <laughs> You're live, Matt. <laughs> Is he canceled? Do you can uncancel him? <laughs> sure, why not? Let's do it. Okay. There you go. There you go. We got two. Blair? You you would both have to vote in the negative to to stop this can uh, uncancellation. So so oh. Illuminati and David, if you both vote no, then then it's an uncancelled canceled. If there is if if they if were you separated, vote present, it, it passes. Yeah. Well, in terms of his job, that's maybe he. I don't know if he's a distraction there. Maybe he shouldn't be there. But in terms of just like a person, if they were separated, I don't know. And they're, these are consensual relationships. Mm. Yeah. I don't know. That's true. I don't think it's that bad. I don't know. <laughs> that, that's where I said if it was, if, if they were still in a relationship, not separated or any of that, I would say, yeah, that's that's not uncancelable behavior. But I don't know. Oh God, I, this is going to pass. <laughs> yeah, I I think I'm gonna vote to uncancel. Fuck it, I am too. Let's do it. <laughs> <laughs> you all persuaded me. <laughs> <laughs> I'm, I'm just proportionally thrilled. <laughs> a less controversial one, and Matt and I actually talked about this like a month ago when I was on his show, would be uh, I, I can give you a first name Ned from the Try Guys. I oh, think no. that. <laughs> that... <laughs> I'm gonna go get my grub. Fuck no, we're not uncanceling him. Not him? Ned, fuck up a bag. Like, is there more to that than I know? Because I thought that what he did was terrible. I don't care about. I don't care about uncanceling him or not. Uh, because I don't really care about him. I think what we were talking about was like how weird of an issue it was. Like people were acting like he killed somebody. He's a scumbag for cheating on his wife. No doubt about it. But Damn. why did everyone act like he murdered somebody? Like, That's my like, yeah, 100%. Like, I thought that was super weird. Behaving poorly. Like, what a like, surprise. Like, yeah. like, the other try guys came that. out. Like, the other try guys came out and were like, he's, com we, we, we no longer know who this man is. <laughs> what has he done? <laughs> he fucked up their bag. So, okay, so. <clears throat> I didn't, I'm um, so nosy. Thank you for finally waiting in my part of the internet. So, I didn't, I've never heard of uh, the try guys, Ned, nothing. But then I became a savant. <laughs> I watch all the videos. So this is this is what the tea is. So his entire brand was 
I love my wife. I am a mm-hmm. white guy. My wife, my wife, my wife, my wife. My wife. Yeah, it would be like if you all found out I'd be at clients meetings now for fun. Like, it's that level of like, oh. <laughs> like, if right now y'all found out my boyfriend was like the head of the NYPD, y'all be like, <laughs> it's like that. My man's like, my wife, my wife, my wife. His wife works there too. And it's like best friends with the, the Asian one that's real fly. That's how, that's like, that was their friend. So they were friends with her before they even knew homie. Oh, they were friends with her. Okay, that They're makes a little bit them. more sense. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, exactly. So that's their personal friend. She appears in videos. She works there too or whatever. Old girl, they, because he did this, the girl he was uh, having his affair with was this girl. Apparently she's part of the food baby. Something else they had, this little girl named Alex who was engaged to somebody or whatever there. They're carrying on this little affair all in the open, all around the place, gallivanting. Like, people don't know who they are. Pictures. They had a fucking, I think, a Bieber concert, my guy. Or, like, something, something, <laughs> extra, something extra, like, poppy and visible. And just, just, just taking pictures with fans. As I see them smiling. Mind you, Alex is fully fucking engaged. So, anyway, once they do this, big scandal, whatever, legal situation. Comedy Central, they just had their, like, like they just got their big, like, food deal for some show. They just finished taping the show. They had been given, like, the mm. prime time hour and all of that. Comedy Central drops them from their best slot. Oh. Yeah, immediately they lose that, get put to, the, to, to whatever, a part of their legal stuff because she works there and whatever, like, issues that cause HR, legal stuff, whatever. They had to take him out of every fucking video. And they had content, like, recorded, like, months and months and months in advance and, like, old shit or whatever. So they had to completely like, just get rid of all these things, spend a whole bunch of money taking him out of there to get rid of any merch that he's in, buy him out of the company, deal with whatever pending lawsuit and this Comedy Central shit. He done cost them a fuck ton of money. Okay, I did not know all of the, the money stuff in the show. That does well, put it into different context. That's why they're angry, but why does everyone else care? Yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> yeah agreed, agreed. Because True. my wife, there, there's, like, for the same reason <laughs> they feel about everything else, there is a white woman whose feelings they believe is hurt at the center of this. A white lady was wrong. <laughs> that is what happened, okay? How dare you cheat on this awesome white lady? You came around here and you told us you loved this white woman. You said my wife. My well, that wife. explains it then, I guess. No, this dude, I, I, I am privy to a little bit of that because I saw a clip of him. He was literally, so since he ha- he's a father, right? I don't know how many kids they have. But because he loves his wife so much, he literally put, like, this electroshock pad on his gooch to simulate giving birth. <laughs> And they did a whole episode on this, and the other Try Guys were holding his arms, and he's going, ah! And for that alone, he should be canceled. So I do understand. Cancellations, not new cancellations. Sorry. We can't cannot uncancel him. No. We are unable no. to do it because he fucked their bag up. Like, okay. That's, okay. That's, that's actually very fair. Yes, it's the money. It's the, the internet money needs to stop to caring me. as much, though. They Individually, they can care. Yes. No, other people, yeah, but you know how they go. Like, again, yeah. it's the same thing with the John Mulaney thing. Oh, a white, a white lady's feelings were hurt, so we are all very upset. Mm. You know what I mean? Like, that's really, even though this is just, like, normal shit. Like, bitches get cheated on every day, B. Mm-hmm. But, you know, I understand. I understand. But it's a money situation to me. That's yeah. why he's got to go. He fucked up everybody's bag. Also, yes. say he's a liability issue, too. When you have someone who owns a company sleeping with your employee... That's a yeah. legal liability. He opened them up to, they're going to have to pay Absolutely. out. He opened them up to lawsuits and all kind of shit and all kind of stuff. Exactly. Exactly right. That's like, especially with whatever fallout. Who knows how she's mm-hmm. going to, because she had a fiance. She lost her fiance and all kind of stuff, blah, 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 blah. She could easily legally be like, he, and it could be true. He took advantage or this undue pressure or yada, 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 yada. You've opened them up to all kind of fucking liability. And so, yeah. It's an imbalance of power between the two. You can say that's two individuals, a man and a woman. But this is someone who was the owner and technically your boss sleeping with mm. you behind your wife's back, who is your friend and also your yeah. co-worker. It's a yeah. very legally precarious situation in terms of working economics inside that business. If they kept him, what it would have told the remaining employees, if there were any others who maybe he had slept with, was that a lawsuit could potentially be viable at that point, I think. And I think that those people would have a case. And, exactly. probably, and they would. That's a lay of me here, but... Um, from what I've read, at least that's, I think what the, what the bigger issue is while everyone's dealing with the, um, the parasocial relationship point of, oh my God, blah, 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 blah. There's a whole issue. Whoa. What was that? Yeah. Oh, okay. I'll experience it too. I thought it was yeah. just, we all, yeah. <laughs> yeah. I was like, oh, that was, that was so <laughs> okay. Yeah. Now they're trying to end us. 
Yeah, yeah. Ned, That's Ned the deep up. state. After telling us to go to bed. <laughs> it is. <laughs> All right. Let's call it a night, y'all. It's time for everyone's nightly shout outs. Where y'all are. Where y'all streaming. Putting out content. Please. Uh, sh- should we do clockwise from Mike? Mike, top left corner, then Ole, then... It's going to be uh, different on everybody's screen. Uh, yeah, I, I, I oh, clockwise doesn't yeah. work. Yeah. Uh, Mike's okay. not going to talk right, to me. We could go in alphabetical order. There we go. <laughs> yeah, Blair. Blair. Oh, shit, I'm first. Okay, cool. Um, <laughs> fine. Uh, all right. Hey, everyone. I'm Blair or the Illuminati. Um, I don't really stream super often, though I'm trying to do it now with uh, the Leftist Mafia. Most of the time, you can find me on YouTube, youtube.com slash Illuminati. We have over 1.5 million of you joining us, which accumulates for about 15 million views a month. You guys are crazy. Absolutely love it. Um, and we cover three topics uh, every single week, usually revolving around business corruption. Ta-da! Hi, I'm David Dole. I host The Rational National on YouTube. I cover news, politics, and have a good time. <laughs> Sorry, guys, it's late. I'm weird right now. Um, <laughs> but if you're, if you're not a subscriber, subscribe to the show, therationalnational.com. If you want to be a patron, rational, therationalnational.com slash join or the merch store, therationalnational.com slash merch. There you go. Lance. Hey, I'm Lance of the Surf TV. If you like the weird ass uh, comedy dumpster fire, uh, that is the words that come out of my mouth. Come check me out at uh, you know twitter.com slash the surf TV, uh, twitch.com slash the surf TV, youtube.com slash the surf TV, and if you want daily news, youtube.com slash the surf times. Thank you so much for having me. Uh, y'all are a ton of fun. Matt. Check me out at youtube.com slash Matt Binder and at twitch.tv slash Matt Binder and at Matt Binder on Twitter. Matt Binder, Matt Binder, Matt Binder. Just search for me on whatever platform you want and I'll probably be there under Matt Binder. <laughs> Mike. Uh, you can find me on YouTube. I host The Humanist Report, new videos almost every single day. Please go and subscribe. We're trying to hit 400K. And I think we can do it next year. Also, check out Unbossed by Nina Turner. I was on her show today. Oh, uh, yeah. It's a great show. Check out my appearance. It's uploaded on her channel. Uh, go subscribe to her as well. So, yeah. Oh, and last, it's me. Um, my name is Olayami. I realized that I never introduced or told anybody how to pronounce my name right. And I was like, you know what? Let me say this before this this mispronunciation of it sticks, but it, it's a <laughs> Olayami, but you can call me Olay. So, you know, make your lives easy. Uh, you can follow me on everything on all social medias at Miss Olurin. That's M S O L U R I N and follow my sub stack and I'd be all around the place, but you know, social media and you can catch me here on Thursdays. Bye y'all. All right. Have a great night, everybody. See you all See next week. Night, everybody. Take care folks.